Attention stations on the network. Our broadcast will begin in 10 minutes from my mark. In 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, mark. That was your 10-minute time check, stations.
Attention stations on the network. Our broadcast will begin in five minutes from my mark. In five, four, three, two, one, mark. That was your five-minute time check, stations. Attention stations on the network. Our broadcast will begin in two minutes from my mark. In five, four, three, two, one, mark. That was your two minute time check stations. Attention stations on the network. Our broadcast will begin in one minute from my mark. In five, four, three, two, one, mark. That was your one minute time check stations.
on the Hawkeye Sports Network. From Learfield, Hawkeye Baseball is on the air. Hawkeye Baseball is brought to you by High V. Score big savings with the new High V Perks membership. University of Iowa Healthcare. Changing medicine, changing lives. Oak Knoll Retirement Community. Homewood Suites and Home 2. Hawk fans, experience your home away from home at Coralville's finest all-suite hotels. Iowa Corn. You might think Iowa just grows corn, but the truth is, corn grows Iowa. Brought to you by Iowa's corn farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and the Iowa Corn Promotion Board. Also brought to you by Mediacom, home of extreme and one gig internet speeds. Wimmer's Meats, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. Travel Leaders, Destinations Unlimited, the official travel partner of the Hawkeyes. And by Bud and Mary's. There's no THC cap on Iowa medical cannabis, and getting a card is fast and easy online. Get your medical card today. Visit BudMary.com. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. From the campus of the Ohio State University, it's time for Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. Live from Nick Swisher Field at Bill Davis Stadium in Columbus, it's game two of the series between the Ohio State Buckeyes and the Iowa Hawkeyes. Welcome to the broadcast booth in Columbus alongside my fine color analyst, John Evans. I'm John Leo. Iowa aims to even the series with Ohio State after dropping the opener yesterday 8-5. to five. The Hawkeyes battled hard but just couldn't overcome the Buckeyes' speed on the base paths. Iowa turns to Marcus Morgan on the mound who will be making his ninth start of the season in Ohio State will counter with Gavin Bruni, another left-hander. The Hawkeyes have dropped two Big Ten series openers this year, but they've rallied back to win both of those series, one against Purdue and one against Minnesota. They'll look to start that trek again today in sunny but windy Columbus. It's Ohio State and Iowa, the Buckeyes and Hawkeyes, live from Nick Swisher Field at Bill Davis Stadium with first pitch coming in a bit. Ohio State took game one of the series last night, 8-5, to five, but some Hawkeye highlights from that one. Needs it. Here's the 2-2. Called third strike. Back door breaking ball. Didn't even have to knock, and it came through the door. Two down. 0-2, Raider lifts in the air, deep to right. Right fielder going back. Oakley at the track, at the wall. Get going, baby. It's gone. Adios, Pelota for Raider Tello. And the Hawkeyes are on the board in the fourth. 2-2. Lined into left. This one is hooking towards the line. It's down for a base hit. All the way to the wall. Muffler will score. They're waving Seegers. He's on his way home. Now he'll stop and go back to third. And it was probably the wise move. An RBI double for Andy Nelson. 4-2 to two, Ohio State. He'll swing at the first pitch and line it deep into center. Center fielder moving back. He'll make the catch. Moore will tag and score from third. Just 6-4 to four now. 1-0 from Young, ground ball to Seegers at short. Michael's got it. He'll step on the bag, throw to first. Good pick by Davis Kopp for the 6-3 to three double play to end the seventh. Iowa couldn't uh, rally back and win yesterday's game, losing to Ohio State 8-5. to five. The Hawkeyes now 17-14, and 5-5 and five in the Big Ten. Look to get back up over 500 in conference play in just a little bit as Iowa and Ohio State get set for game two of the series from Columbus. John talks with Jack Young after the break. Back in just a moment, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Feel the excitement as NASCAR returns to the Iowa Speedway with Powerball and the Iowa Lottery. Just add the double play bonus to your Powerball ticket for $1, then enter it in the VIP club, and you could win tickets to the sold-out NASCAR race or other exclusive race weekend prizes. Feel the power of NASCAR and double play today. Woohoo! See complete rules and details at ialottery.com slash VIP. Hi, it's your friend, social media. You know where I showcase the cool life of sports stars and friends. But don't fall for the editing and good lighting, because we all have struggles and challenges, like with alcohol or drug use, gambling, or our mental health. You know, talking about it is a sign of strength. Maybe you don't know who to talk to? Your Life Iowa can give you resources or treatment options. Get free 24-7 confidential support. Call, text, or chat online at yourlifeiowa.org. A message from Iowa HHS. 
Have you heard about this new type of television experience from Epson? It's called the Epic Vision Ultra Laser Projection TV. It combines a new type of laser projection technology along with a unique Epson Silverflex screen to produce an epic 120-inch 4K Pro UHD picture that's up to four times bigger than a traditional 60-inch TV. There's no better way to watch live sports, and watching Iowa basketball play live on this big, bright TV is simply awesome. If you're a sports fanatic like me, you need to check this new Epson TV out for yourself. Visit Epson.com slash TV to learn more. If you've got the right tools and the friendly people at U.S. Bank in your corner, making smarter money choices is a piece of cake. If only our tools and helpful advisors could have helped you avoid some of those not-so-smart choices in life. Like that time you tried to pick up unicycling. Oh, oh, coming through! Or when you thought it'd be okay to pet that squirrel in the park. Good squirrel. Good squirrel. <laughs> While we can't help you with all that, we can help you bank smartly at usbank.com slash smarter together. Member FDIC. Welcome back to Hawkeye Pregame. I'm here with Hawkeye reliever Jack Young. Jack, thanks for joining me. Thank you. So, again, I ask everybody this question. You're, you're an Iowa guy, but but didn't get directly to Iowa. Tell me a little bit about the route to get here. Yeah, so out of high school, Iowa was my dream school. Always wanted to come here, but didn't get that opportunity. So when JUCO went to Parkland for two years, um, and it, it all just happened fast. I was taking a visit to another school, and my high school coach texted me and said, hey, Iowa wants to talk to you. Here's uh, Marty Sutherland's number. Gave Marty a call, and the next day I was on my visit and committed right there. <laughs> it, it happened re really within 24 hours from calling him to committing. It, so, pretty fast. Got the opportunity to come and jumped on it? Absolutely. Out of way. So... You came here. You, you've been. Uh, you've kind of been working to find a role, and then this year you've you've kind of really knuckled down a, a really nice role. You made some changes though last summer that give that gave you this opportunity. What again? Generally, what was that all about? Yeah. So uh, really, just started with being a middle infielder all my life. <clears throat> last year, going over the top, struggled a little bit, and Sean thought it would be a good idea to just try dropping down sidearm and seeing what would happen and I threw a couple bullpens last year and they all went well so at my exit meeting last year they told me they want me to work on it so worked on it all summer luckily had Snep with me and uh, he helped me out a lot when at first I was really struggling with it so yeah just to make it a little more competitive against righties uh, dropped down and it's yeah it's worked out well. So kind of an idea of uh, second base shortstop ball you get rid of it a little quicker sidearm maybe or, or that three-quarter slot? Yeah just something a little different you don't see it a ton so something to just give myself an edge especially coming in and the situations I'm coming into a lot of times needing a ground ball having a ball run in on those righties and jamming them up a little bit, getting them to roll over. Yeah, you feel pretty good with that because it's more a way you've done it all your life. And yeah, uh, really from the start, it felt pretty natural. Honestly, uh, once I started facing some competition, it struggled for a couple of weeks, but dialed it in and super comfortable with it. Do you have any trouble with like just the so from over the top breaking ball to the side? Did you kind of have to relearn that, or did it mostly translate? So. Last year, it, I mean, it took me probably three or four months to really learn a sweeper. And then, uh, but once I dropped down, it's pretty natural. Just coming from that arm angle, just naturally getting on the side of the ball allowed me to sweep it pretty well. So uh, we, we've talked a lot in these, in these other things. I always ask, what, what do you do for fun? I know one of the things you do for fun, but I'll, I'll ask that question. What, what do you do for fun outside of baseball? Pretty much golf. about all I can do. <laughs> and you did that, uh, you guys were... We're playing, uh, I guess we went out and played last Monday, right? Yep, we did. It, it was good. It was fun. And so, are you in the Are you in the top five? Are you kinda... uh, I don't think I'm in the top five, but I would say I'm pretty consistent with what I shoot, but I wouldn't say top five. Okay, so I think, you, I think we, got, we got Marcus is, a, is pretty good, which yep. I mean, he was an all-state in a couple sports. So yeah. That's an easy transfer. Yep. Who's the, who's the better? Uh, who else is a good pitcher golfer? Pitchers. Uh, Volker's good. Uh, I've heard Whitlock's good. I haven't golfed with Whitlock yet. Uh, golfed with Dute a couple of times. He's solid. Yeah. Uh, Hoag, Hoag says he's good. I haven't seen him yet. I want to see him. I think we might go this Monday, so we'll see. What? Uh, where do you play around home? 
Uh, I like, let's see, Hidden Hills is where I go with my buddies, and then Palmer. Okay. Uh, I like Palmer a lot. It's a little nicer. Uh, and then Hidden Hills when I'm just kind of goofing off with my friends. So back half of the season, what's uh, what's kind of some of the goals? What are we, you know, obviously the first half record isn't quite where you want. There have been some flashes of, of really good and some flashes of still needing work. What are, what are you trying to do to, to not only help yourself, but as you've developed into more of a leader, what are you trying to do with the team? Whatever it takes. I don't <laughs> I don't care what the role is when they put me in. I just want to go in, and we talk a ton about doing your one ninth and I feel like if I can go in in the situations I'm going in and just get the job done, I, I'm helping my team out and really just getting back to who we know we are as a team and uh, get, get back in that win column. Yeah, unfortunately, there's no easy switch, is there? No, it's baseball's a tough game. Well, and some days, some days you get a lot of things right, and, and it's the it's the one thing you get wrong that, that ends up biting you. It uh, it always finds a way to come back and get you. <laughs> always does. Well, let's, uh, let's get back in the column today and get her going. Yes, sir. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Jack Young, Hawkeye reliever. We'll be back. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Get a great offer on the stylish HRV or the Honda Civic, which car and driver called fun to drive. Honda, the brand named Kelly Blue Book's KBB.com best value brand for 2023. For a limited time, well-qualified buyers can get a 3.9% APR on a 2024 Honda Civic or HRV. So see your central Midwest Honda dealer today. Honda gets the Midwest. See dealer for financing details exclusive against I and type our current driver January 2023 based on 2023 brand image awards from Kelly Blue Book. Visit kbb.com for more information. A bag of corn is, well, a bag of corn. Unless it's a bag of Pioneer brand chrome seed corn. Then you're dealing with the most optimized yield potential, agronomic performance, and insect protection the Pioneer lineup has to offer. A bag that will make life easier for you eight bushels per acre easier and much harder for rootworms in the competition pioneer brand chrome products field proven and ready for yours visit pioneer.com slash plant chrome american equity salutes today's hero of the game as a proud sponsor of the ongoing recognition of our military during hawkeye games this season please join american equity in thanking all who have served our country american equity is more than just retirement savings and income products they are committed to providing you best in class service and high quality retirement income that helps deliver the independence to dream and reach your goals to learn more about american equity please visit their website at american-equity.com are aches, pains, or injuries keeping you on the sidelines? At Athletico, our movement experts are here to help you turn your setbacks into comebacks and create a personalized game plan for your recovery. With no prescription or referral needed, Athletico Physical Therapy is where your comeback story begins. Get started today by scheduling a free assessment at athletico.com. Proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Welcome back to pregame coverage of Iowa Hawkeye Baseball from Bill Davis Stadium today in Columbus, getting set for game two against Ohio State. We're joined by head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller. Coach, uh, battled hard last night, but didn't come out on top. No, and that's, that's a good way to describe it, John, is that we, I thought we played hard last night, uh, but we just didn't play well enough to win. I mean, there were just too many, too many little mistakes that, that cost us, and, um, you know, what should have been a tie game or a one-run game going into the ninth, you know, was a four-run deficit. And, um, you know, we get two runners on and, and end up scoring a run but fall short. Um, you know, with the quality of arms that Ohio State was throwing at us, that's a tough tough challenge, you know. And, and, and had we played better, you know, it would have been a, a different situation for um, Ohio State's bullpen. Uh, Do you have any uh, any positives from the from the game last night? Oh, Some yeah. things to take I, away I from. I thought there were a lot of positives. I mean, you know, the way Kate Obermiller started the game was in, was fantastic. I mean, he went out and just pounded the zone those first two, two three innings. Um, I thought offensively, you know, the left hander Beetlesheen that we were talking about before the game. I mean, he was up to ninety seven and you know sitting 95, 97 in the first first two innings, and I was like, man, what a good arm and. Um, the hitters just stuck with it. They, they grinded it out. They ended up getting some runs off of him. Um, we just needed to hold them down, and, and we didn't. And then, um, you know, offensively, I felt like the guys just kept battling throughout the game. 
Uh, Jack Young threw well. Aaron Savory did a pretty pretty good job and threw well um, out of the bullpen. Um, but like I said, it was it was just little things. They we we allowed them to run us into the ground with a stolen base. And this team with Ohio State this year is just loaded with speed. I mean, there there are some really fast guys in their lineup, and you know, and this. You know, it kind of stinks. It's just baseball and, and kind of the way the seasons went this far. And you've heard me say this many times before. It's, it's in this, in Division One baseball, it's not so much who you play, but it's when you play them. You know, and 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 Ohio State was just scuffling to find themselves for a good chunk of the year. And unfortunately, they're in a really good place right now. And uh, with the you know the talented guys they have and pesky pesky outs and. Um, you know, we don't have a, a pitching staff this year that's loaded with lefties, and they throw, you know, seven, eight lefties in the lineup that can, and six or seven of them are plus runners. It's just a, it's not a great matchup for us, you know. It's just the way it is. I mean, so, that's how it is in baseball. Some teams match up better. It doesn't really matter the record. And mm-hmm. They're just not a great matchup for us. And uh, then today we got, we got Marcus Morgan going. You know, Brody Breck is going to bump a day aggravated something in the weight room early in the week didn't think it was a big deal it was still kind of bothering him so um you know our trainers felt like a, another day off um might might help out so that's gonna throw a, a little wrench into our plans and uh, you know just kind of the way things are going right now we just have to find a way but the, the way we played last night from uh focus intensity you know, effort, all that stuff was tremendous. Um, pulling for each other, all those good things. It was really good. It's just we just didn't execute well enough to win. Uh, let's unpack some of those things one by one. We'll start with the, the speed game that Ohio State has. How to? How can we counter that? How can we uh, attack that and slow well, them down a bit? Well, the first thing is we're going we're gonna to start um, Cade Moss at catcher. Cade, Cade is the best throwing catcher we have by far. And then it, the, the other one, I mean, most stolen bases are off the pitcher. And, um, you know, Kay just didn't do a very good job yesterday with, with holding runners, and it's a part of being a pitcher is that you have to control the running game, and it's your job to control the running game. And our guys are well-trained at it, but like I said yesterday, we didn't do a good job with it, and uh, Marcus is better at it. Um, Jack Young shut it down when he came in. Aaron Savory did a good job for the most part when he came in, um, and it starts with the pitcher, and they, you know all of our pitchers are supposed to be under one three seconds to the plate so that the... Uh, so that the catcher has a chance to throw them out, but um, with some of the guys they have, that's that's not even good enough. And uh, with with unless it's Cade in there, because Cade can, like I said, Cade's the best throwing catcher uh, by far on our uh, on our group. Uh, do you like your team's chances uh, if this turns into a higher scoring series? Does it need to be a higher scoring series for for the Hawks to come out on top? That's a good question. You know, the way the wind's blowing is blowing in from left across, and we 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 can go the other way pretty well. The the only issue you run into there is if if the opponent um, can execute their pitches and pitch into our right-handers, that makes it really challenging because if you hit balls to the left, they're just outs. Yeah. Um, so you're hoping you can get balls out over the plate to drive uh, to the right center gap and uh, you know, with us having a predominantly right-handed lineup. And so that's the worry you have, and that's what got us in trouble with Michigan. Um, they had a weekend where their pitchers were able to execute location and if you can locate in a, in a spot that's not going to let the, the hitters play to the wind, man, then you're in trouble. Uh, and, it, you know, if that makes any sense. And, and that's what they did. And so you just don't know. I mean, I'm always I'm always for, you know, keep them off base. You know, pitching and defense is what we're programs build on. And then the offense will figure it out. But without Peterson and without Andy running full speed, he's only he's toughing it out for us about 60%, 70%. Um, it's a tall task trying to outscore people for this lineup right now. Uh, so with that being said, Marcus getting the start, you, you know that Marcus on the mound, he's got it in there. He just hasn't found it quite this season. No, he hasn't, and we just have to do a good job of getting him out before before things um, before things go you know collapse. And he's had he's had starts where three innings were just lights out, and then boom, then you have a bad one. And uh, in the past, we've tried to extend him and get him to the sixth inning so he didn't have to go to the pen and you know today it'll be a situation where we just have to go yep. you know if we go we go we'll use whoever we have to use and do whatever we have to do to try to win today and we'll figure it out tomorrow uh, do you have an idea when it comes to the bullpen coach who you might go to first or depend on the situation more than likely it'd be anthony watts okay. um is kind of what we're, we're we're looking at and then 
perfect world, you, 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 you see Morgan Watson today, and that's it. And we got everybody else tomorrow with Brody. That'd be great. Let's uh, let's plan on that, Coach. Uh, what do you see from Ohio State's pitcher today? Um, similar, big left-hander, going to run it up to 93. Not quite the velocity as what we saw last night. Maybe not quite the command. A little different, though. Uh, the guy last night tried to get us to chase down in the zone. Uh, Bruni today is going to try to get us to chase up in the zone. So we have to change, switch our sights and, and lay off the stuff up in the zone. For the most part, we, we did a decent job yesterday of, uh, of laying off the low pitch, um, but it did get us in trouble at times. St- you know, it, it, it killed some rallies uh, where we had things going, and then a couple chases got us in trouble. We got to do the same thing um, today, except keep him uh, keep him down, get, make him make him get the ball down. Uh, Coach, I know we're focused on this this one particular game, but you look at other teams that have made it to the College World Series or made it deep into the into the postseason. They've gotten hot late. Uh, what is it going to take for your team to, to get hot at this stage and, and push towards the end of the season? Um, pitch better and eliminate free bases. Simple as that. Sound like some good keys to victory today. Thanks for your time, Coach. Uh, thanks, John. Head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller, on our pregame show from Bill Davis Stadium in Columbus, Ohio. Getting set for game two of the series with the Buckeyes right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Get a great offer on the stylish HRV or the Honda Civic, which car and driver called fun to drive. Honda, the brand named Kelly Blue Book's KBB.com best value brand for 2023. For a limited time, well-qualified buyers can get a 3.9% APR on a 2024 Honda Civic or HRV. So see your central Midwest Honda dealer today. Honda gets the Midwest. See dealer for financing details exclusive against I and type our car and driver January 2023 based on 2023 brand image awards from Kelly Blue Book. Visit KBB.com for more information. Even the simplest act can set a chain of good in motion, like choosing Delta Dental of Iowa for your dental and vision insurance, because we invest in your community. So whether you get your plan at work or purchase it through us, you make a difference for others. Visit SharingHealthySmiles.com and choose Delta Dental for your smile, for your health, and for your community. John Evans and John Leo back on the campus of the Ohio State University. Game two of the series with the Buckeyes coming up. Try to get back uh, to even with the Buckeyes after losing the opener last night. Iowa battled hard last night, John Evans, but uh, just couldn't co- overcome a couple of deficits from early on. So, well, for sure. And we, and we talked about, and I talked about it with some of the coaches this morning, um, the game got played yesterday at, at Ohio State speed. You know, they knew they were going to put some pressure on the base pass, knew that the starting pitcher was going to work quickly and, and you know, be on the hitters very quickly. Um, and, and Iowa never really was able to do anything to, to consistently push back from that. You know, had, uh, you had a couple hitters that, that maybe would step out of the box and try to break up some rhythm. Um, but you had, you had pitchers that... Um, we executed a couple of really good pickoff moves and then didn't finish it and get outs because the, the speed put pressure, the speed put pressure on our infield. And um, you know, now that they've seen it, um, I was going to have to respond better to that today and tomorrow if they want different results. Cade Moss will get the start at catcher, and Coach Heller talked about uh, putting him in the lineup to, to help that from the catcher position to maybe – uh, cut down some of the runners, but as Coach also talked about it, it really starts on the mound and, and the better holds from the pitchers. Well, and, and you you kind of caught it yesterday with with how, what how Cade's process works. That you know he he guy had his head down and and I thought oh, surely there's got to be a little bit of a lift in there, but but there really wasn't. And, and Ohio State had him kind of timed up, and, and you know it's one of the it's one of the I guess I'd call it the problems with with these wristbands or with the coaches calling all of the signals is um, sometimes guys forget that you're you're an athlete, you're a baseball player, and you know you look down and it says pick off. I'm like, okay, I pick the guy off. And if you look down and it says pitch, you think, oh, I don't pick the guy off. So I'm I don't look or I don't do the process of the guy walking off the bag and he's 15 feet off the bag. I should probably throw it over there. I, I think you make a good point. And, and so that's the you know, that's the idea of of yeah. It absolutely starts with it starts with the pitcher. Um, but I'd go back to something even more fundamental than that. It starts with the guys all being baseball players and athletes again. You know, going back to that. 
you know, that 12-year-old that or the 14-year-old Babe Ruth player that, man, I don't need no coach to tell me to throw it over there. I'm going to throw it over there. And, and so, you know, a little bit more of that. Um, and I think that that'd go a long way because, I mean, they're all clearly talented. It's just letting that talent shine. Yeah, getting back to the, you know, just just play. Just play, guys. Maybe don't think so much. React. Play. Uh, play the game. Yeah, what is you know, react to what you, react to what you see and, and what happens in front of you, and, and you know that just hasn't happened on a on a regular basis. We'll step aside for today's national anthem. We'll be back with starting lineups and first pitch right after this. This is Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. Hi, I'm Gary Dolphin, and if you want your home to be exceptionally comfortable during these cold Iowa winters and hot, humid summers, you need to turn to Dave Lennox and your local Lennox Home Comfort Specialist. Lennox has been serving Iowa consumers since 1895, when Dave Lennox built his first furnace in Marshalltown, and Lennox is still building its high-efficiency furnaces and air conditioners there today. For the best home comfort system you can buy, it's Lennox and your local Lennox dealer. Lennox and the Hawkeyes. Now there's a winning combination. Welcome back to the Nitrogen Stabilizers Draft. Up the night technology, first pick, just like the last 46 years. That's what we love about this sport. We just don't know. We know. It keeps nitrogen in the corn's root zone for eight weeks, compared with two weeks for others. With the first pick, farmers select. Up the night technology from Corteva AgriScience. Ah, that's it. I'm going for a pretzel. The pick is in. Optonite technology from Corteva AgriScience with InServe and Instinct Next Gen Nitrogen Stabilizers. National Anthem is complete. We're getting set for game two of the series with Ohio State. Iowa 17 and 14 on the season, 5 and 5 in the Big Ten. Ohio State is 16 and 14. They are 4 and 3 in the Big Ten. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. Iowa currently tied for sixth in the Big Ten. Illinois is the league leader right now at seven and two. Nebraska five and two in the Big Ten. Michigan is six and three. Purdue six and four. Ohio State four and three. The Hawkeyes are tied with Penn State for six. So just a uh, two and a half games back of Illinois. The Hawkeyes will play Illinois and Nebraska later on this season. Try to get back up over 500 with a win today over Ohio State. Uh, the Buckeyes on a four-game win streak. They finished their series uh, with Nebraska with a win last weekend and then won a couple of midweek games and uh, beat Iowa last night. So the Hawkeyes will look to stop that and start a win streak of their own. The Hawkeyes haven't had a lengthy win streak like we uh, were fortunate to see last year. So see if Iowa can start to piece something like that uh, together starting today. How about right now? How about today? Now's a good time. Now's as good a time as any. Yeah, whatever it is. Uh, what are we? Four minutes from first pitch. Let's let's start right. Let's start four minutes from now. Let's do it. All right. Here's the starting lineups for today's game. Andy Nelson will lead things off for the Hawkeyes. He'll play right field. Raider Tello bats second. He'll play third. Davis Cop starts at first base, batting third. Cleanup spot is Kyle Huxdorf. He'll play center field. The DH today is Reese Moore batting fifth. Connor Hennings plays left and will bat sixth. Seven, eight, nine for Iowa. Gable Mitchell at second. Michael Seegers at short. Cade Moss will catch. The starting pitcher today for Iowa is Marcus Morgan. Gavin Bruni will pitch for the Buckeyes. Big, tall left-hander. Two and one on the season in eight starts with a 5.45 ERA, 33 innings, 30 hits, 23 runs. 20 of those are earned. Some control problems with 25 walks, 31 strikeouts, 240, 240 batting average. Giving up 13 extra base hits, so you can get to him just a little bit. So I'm pulling him up here. Fastball, you know, kind of the again something similar to what uh, uh, to what we saw yesterday. Fastball will be in the low 90s. He'll throw that slider then uh, around 80, but what you'll see kind of that first time through the lineup, you'll probably see a lot of attacking fastballs and then start working the slider in more on the second trip through. Morgan versus Bruni was the Saturday matchup last year in Iowa City when these teams met. The Hawkeyes 
won the game 15 to three. More of that. Yeah, something a little bit, a little bit closer to that today would be nice. Bruni threw three in the third, gave up five hits, four earned, struck out three and walked one. Morgan on the flip side had a really nice start for Iowa. Five innings, three hits, two earned. He struck out seven along the way. So if you could carbon copy that, that'd be nice uh, today. I think Marcus would uh, Marcus would take that start and run right now. The kind of the way his his year has gone to this point, I think he'd uh, he'd appreciate five solid innings with seven strikeouts. No, the talent's in there, the skills in oh. there for Morgan. There's just no question about that. It's it's coming down to piecing it together and and uh, performing now. Well, yeah, it's just finding a consistency. You know, it, it's it's how many uh, you know how many quality innings can Marcus put together. You know. It, if you remember early last year, uh, you know, Marcus would throw two great innings and then have trouble in the third. And then he'd come back out and be okay in the fourth, and then maybe the fifth wouldn't be very good. But then by the end of the year, uh, you know, Marcus was as dependable as they come as he just filled up the strike zone and missed a lot of bats. And he, we've seen some of those flashes. I mean, we had a, the first two innings, I think, what, Marcus threw 16 pitches a couple outings ago and just mowed through mowed through the lineup but then came out in the third and, and had all kinds of trouble and you know the last start was was two and two thirds and, and 95 pitches so um, you know for Marcus it, the, the arm talent is there um, you know when I he was my pregame interview earlier um, might have been this week um, you talk to him he's just such an easy kid to root for mm -hmm. um, you know, he, he knows he knows what he needs to do and uh, wants to execute on it just uh, you know when uh, when the number's been called and he's rolled out uh, rolled out on top of the hill it just hasn't quite been able to get it done so far this year but uh, but yeah the talent's certainly there moments away from first pitch here this afternoon not a cloud in the sky in Columbus sunny low 60s it's pretty breezy same wind as yesterday not as strong though but it is blowing out to right across the field from left to right it's a spring football saturday here at ohio state so some more fans at today's game as they come on over from the horseshoe which is just to the south of where we're at quite the double header with Nicki minaj last night and uh, spring football today busy weekend in uh, columbus all right we're underway first pitch is a fastball up and into andy nelson that's ball one the left-hander deals. Andy takes strike number one. Yeah, a couple fastballs, 93 and 92 from Bruni. He seems to work quickly as well. Already ready for the next pitch. Here it is. That's high above the letters. Gravelin, the catcher for Ohio State, tried to snap it down. Two and one. Bruni delivers. Nelson takes strike two. Just a bit lower there. Just a bit. 2-2 <laughs> two -two to Nelson. That's high. That was part of the scout, wasn't it, uh, that, that Bruni likes to get the high chase? He does. And, you know, the, the wonder with the heavy wind still blowing out to right again, you kind of wondered if he might abandon that a little. Lead-off walk as Nelson has to slide back in the box. Takes inside. That's six straight fastballs, all 92 to 93, but... Kind of spread all over the all over the zone but to your point mostly all elevated so you know raider tello hit a home run yesterday on a high fastball that he drove out to right here is tello takes low and in for ball one and this is you know, maintain discipline in the zone you try to work the count in your favor early Breaking ball, swing and a miss, one and one. First one we've seen. First one of those he's shown was a pretty darn good one. And I think Raider was looking fastball and swung right over it. Out of the stretch, Tello hits it in the air down the right field line. That will get foul out of play. It's one and two. I was a quick team too, but probably don't suspect Nelson uh, running much this weekend. No, I can't imagine any any scenario where he goes. One, two is grounded left side. That'll be foul. Three and two and two outs. <laughs> and even then, that's a 
just to get in motion. That's right. Yeah, it's, it's strenuous. It's just to get uh, just to get the feet moving and turning over. He's gone with a couple more off-speed pitches to Tello, and now with a one and two count. Raiders back in the box. Here's the pitch. Outside corner called third strike. Backdoor breaking ball. Raider took it. He's out number one. I don't blame Raider for taking that one. I just have to be the kind of the experiment, the first batter to test that zone. It, that that pitch is pretty high too, isn't it? Well, that's uh, again one you're you know in that case in that scenario you're just kind of you're tipping your cap and saying, hey, okay, good pitch, good call by the umpire. We'll move on. Brings up Davis Cop. Fastball low to Davis. Nelson at first base. Now if Davis was watching Tello. There's a good chance this is the breaking ball. And it was. It dropped low. Good call. 2-0. and So far, the scout's been right on, hasn't it? <laughs> uh, he threw everything was a fastball to Andy, but then he came back to Tello, and he changed it a little bit. So with Cop now, he gets the fastball here. Good cross count. That's a breaking ball up in the zone for a strike. I sense though if he keeps throwing that there and Iowa hones in on it, you can you can shoot that to the opposite field. Well, Outside breaking ball like that? Well, especially hanging everything up like that. He hasn't really uh, he hasn't <laughs> pounded the bottom of the zone at all like we saw yesterday. Two one delivery to cop. Took it for another strike. Breaking ball that dropped down the heart of the plate, two and two. You know, his zone percentage wasn't great on sliders, and he's done a good job here filling it up so far. 2-2, swing and a miss. High fastball that had some tail to it out of the zone, and cop offered, missed, two down. Yeah, that's uh, you get set up a little bit there with a couple breaking balls in that tunnel, and then he throws a, the arm side fastball that just runs away from you. Looks like it's going to dot the outside and just keeps working away. Kyle Huxdorf batting in the cleanup spot today. Takes a curveball for strike number one. Nelson still at first base. He walked to start today's game. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Bruni has slowed things down for Iowa in the first. Here's the 0-1, fastball high and out. Iowa wearing their black tops with the gold block Iowa spelled out across the chest, gray baseball pants. Ohio State with all white today. Ohio State spelled out in red. They're scarlet across the chest. They've got red baseball caps in the field. Two balls and a strike for Huxdorf. The pitch from Bruni in the dirt. Catcher can't locate it. Nelson caught him between first and second. He takes off for a second. He will be out. That'll do it for the top of the first. Iowa held off the scoreboard. Marcus Morgan takes to the mound right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Brown Deer Golf Club offers a pure golf experience. Manicured bent grass fairways with tees and greens carved into gracefully rolling landscape. Challenging, yet extremely playable. Improve your game with PGA instruction and our full service pro shop. Treat yourself to Bunker's Bar and Grill for lunch or dinner. And our scenic Greenview Banquet Room is perfect for weddings or any special event. Brown Deer Golf Club, a stunning country club setting at affordable public rates. The silly moments, the proud moments, even the hard moments. They're what make life remarkable. And they're why Wellmark Blue Cross and Blue Shield is here for every moment. Committed to making healthcare better, more affordable, with more choices for care. And service and coverage that give you peace of mind no matter what comes your way. So you can show up for every tender moment, every brave moment, and every wouldn't miss it for the world moment. Knowing that blue is here for you. Go to wellmark.com slash every moment to find a plan right for you.
Today's game is brought to you in part by Brown Deer Golf Club in Coralville, featuring Bunkers Bar and Grill. Enjoy a great Bunkers menu with burgers, chicken, salads, and wraps, and Gimme's Pizza and Wings, a new pop-up menu at Bunkers. It's all about savory pizzas and mouth-watering wings. To-go orders are welcome, as are you and your family, at Brown Deer Golf in Coralville. He screwed me up. I tried to distract yeah, I you. Say, he just kept throwing things at me. I'm worried about Aaron's savory pizzas. <laughs> I don't. I just don't think I can hand you the red pen today. The red pen is is uh, it's a bad the opponent's red, color. Bad red pen day, I yes. got you. All right, Ohio State will send Trey Lipsy, Henry Kazmar, and Matthew Gravel into the plate in the first. Iowa defensively looks... The same as yesterday on the infield with Tello at third, Seegers at short, Mitchell at second, and Kopp at first. The outfield is identical as well. Hennings in left, Huxdorf in center, Nelson in right. But the new catcher today is Cade Moss, the defensive specialist. He'll start. Marcus Morgan will pitch for Iowa. Marcus is 1-3 and three on the season, nine appearances, eight starts. Got a closing appearance now in the midweek game. 31 and a third innings, 32 hits, 29 runs have all been earned. 31 walks, 39 strikeouts. Opponents hitting 267. And he's having an equipment malfunction. Marcus does not have his wristband. And so a little bit of a delay here before we get started. I think you've convinced me, John. I'm I'm almost anti wristband now. <laughs> I want I want flashing the signs. I want look to the dugout, get the bill of the cap, tug yeah. on the ear, tap the nose. I want all that stuff back. You gotta be really quick in today's game. First pitch from Marcus. Just low, maybe a touch inside, ball one. There's strike one from Morgan. Lipsy's a left-handed hitter. They're starting left fielder. He was hitless yesterday. A couple of strikeouts grounded into a double play as well. Out of the windup, here's the 1-1. Ooh, that's called high. 2-1. and one. Below the knees for ball three from Morgan. Lipsy with uh, 229 batting average, 30 strikeouts on the year, second, uh, third most on the team. 3 1 pitch from Morgan. Line foul over to the left, look out. He's got some speed as well. Seven stolen bases, don't want to so give him anything free. You might as well put that on repeat as you're uh, going up and down the lineup there. Copy he, and paste. He's got some speed. Full count pitch on its way from Morgan. Outside, ball four. So just like the top half of the inning, a leadoff walk favors the offense. <laughs> Unlike the top of the inning, I think their guy's healthy and probably a uh, a running threat. Kazmar comes up for Ohio State. First pitch from Marcus. Popped up left side. This will get out of play. Kazmar with a triple and a single yesterday. But he also struck out twice. Good job from Marcus on the first pitch. Get right back in the zone. Good fastball right at the bottom of the zone. Short lead for now. Ooh, just outside. Good pitch from Marcus. Just off the edge. It's one and one. Seeger's playing behind second base. Mitchell in his typical spot at second. Tello all alone at third. Breaking ball is called a strike, comes in the back door. Outside to in on Kazmar, it's one and two. Hennings in left is playing relatively shallow due to the wind and the left-hand batter. One, two, hit in the air, two left. Hennings is underneath it. Connor's got it for the first out. Lipsy will retreat back to first base. 
Yeah, it's just like yesterday. Any ball up in the air to left is going to just hit a wall. And I don't mean the outfield wall. <laughs> yeah. It's going to hit a wall of wind and just stop moving. So elevating that direction is not going to be uh, good for your batting average. 400 to straight center, 370 to both gaps, 330 down both lines at Bill Davis Stadium. Batter's eye in center, scoreboard in right center. Black and gray gradient outfield wall. What terminology there, I like it. Well done. Yeah, and I'm stuck on the, the Buckeye leaf I guess that's their emblem that's on their, their wall. Here's Matthew Gravelin. He swings and misses at the first pitch from Morgan. Oh, I got you. I see it. You see him now? Yeah, I didn't see it before. I see it now. Hidden in the, the black part of the wall, but visible over in the gray section. That's a nice pitch from Morgan. Inside breaking ball that just caught the inner quarter of the plate. Gravelin took it for a strike. He's down in the count, nothing in two. Execute. Moss is setting up a little bit outside here, John. The 0-2 is popped up right side. This could be a tough play. Mitchell going back. Nelson in right. He makes the grab for out number two. High fly ball that off the bat Seemed like it was shifting more towards right center, and it was straight away right by the time Andy caught it. Yeah, I thought it was I thought it was Gable Mitchell on the infield, and uh, uh, just again, wind kind of kept blowing it and moving it. And Andy was able to come in from his deep right field station and grab it. Two down for Petterini. Strike one with a fastball from Marcus. We've noticed with. Marcus, when he gets in that smooth rhythm, the quality of his pitches goes way up. And you can see it's it's that that rhythm looks effortless for Marcus. And and I'm seeing it right now in this quick snapshot of the game. Well, again, he's such a good athlete. He just kind of gets it up there and it's just a smooth sling. Owen's in the dirt. Nice block by Moss behind the plate. Yeah, that was a good slide from Cade. I suppose technically if he'd have dropped it, lost it in his feet a minute, he could have thrown him out, and we'd have had a complete mirror of the, <laughs> Identical. Of the top of the first. 1-1 one, one from Morgan. Outside corner, strike two. Well, you don't often get a uh, friendly outside corner when the catcher misses the frame, but... One ball and two strikes. With two outs, the pitch to Pedrini will wait for it. Pickoff move over to first. Marcus already doing a nice job trying his best to keep the runners close to first base. He's varying the timing of it a little bit, too. You know, he's quick pitch. There goes the runner. Here's a ground ball left side. Seegers dives to stop it. He will have no play, no throw, but does a nice job to keep it on the infield. He was moving over to cover second base on the steal, and that took him out of position. Boy, that was... I, you know, we talk a lot. Hawkeyes have had really good luck with, with kind of the hit and run. And Paterini there, that pitch is well off the plate. Not even sure why he swung at it in the first place, but did and was able to kind of poke it through the semi-abandoned hole. Good job from Michael to keep it on the infield. Such a slow roller that uh, really could have caused problems on the base pass if that gotten through. Here's Oakley, another left-handed hitter. Low from Morgan to start the at-bat. Two outs, runners at first and second. Bottom of the first, no score between Iowa and Ohio State. There's strike one. Good pitch from Marcus. Oakley's batting 3-0-3 this season. Nine doubles and three home runs. Here's a ground ball foul to the first base coach's box. One and two. This will be pitch number 21 for Marcus.
Moss setting up outside away from Oakley. Here comes the one two. Called third strike. Outside corner, froze him. Caught him looking, and Morgan gets his first strikeout to end the first. So, yeah, um, we're going to have a little bit bigger strike zone again. Good stuff. We'll take it if it goes both ways, John. <laughs> That's right. All right, Kyle Huxdorf, he'll get to lead off the second. We're back right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Are aches, pains, or injuries keeping you on the sidelines? At Athletico, our movement experts are here to help you turn your setbacks into comebacks and create a personalized game plan for your recovery. With no prescription or referral needed, Athletico Physical Therapy is where your comeback story begins. Get started today by scheduling a free assessment at athletico.com. Proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes. How do you become America's best-selling brand? Let's break it down. Innovative tech means smarter and safer driving. Intelligent all-wheel drive will keep you ready for anything. And built Ford Tough Trucks will always get the job done. Plus, come into your local Ford store today and get super low APR financing, big cash back, and great lease offers on Ford's full line of cars, trucks, and SUVs. That's Ford, and that's how you become America's best-selling brand. Sales claim based on calendar year sales. This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by the University of Iowa. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the university and Learfield. Announcers are provided by Learfield and approved by the university. Kyle Huckstorff leads off Iowa's second inning. No score through one in Columbus. Kyle takes a high and outside strike called. All right. We're inconsistent with the high third of the zone so far. Hey, 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 hey. Second inning. We're not. We're, I, we've had a lot of volume up there already, though. <laughs> there have been a lot of pitches that have been high in the zone from Bruni. That's fair. One and one. Huxdorf really seeing him for the second time. Yeah, exactly. He's kind of getting a, somewhat of a soft four pitches already. Breaking ball on the outside edge. That's a strike one and two. Huxdorf was in the box when Andy Nelson was caught stealing. And the top of the first. Bruni kicks and fires the one two. Kyle saws it off, hit it over to the right side, foul and out of play. One two bounced in front of the plate. Catcher gravel and took it off his shoulder. Of course he did. He got, he got abused yesterday. Yeah, you got to wonder what his uh, right leg looks like. He took two foul balls, at least, on redirections. 2-2, two -two, Huck hits in the air, deep to left. Left fielder Lipsy going back a couple of steps. The wind playing tricks with it, but he's able to catch it in front of the track. For the first out of the second. He kind of hit a little bit of a knuckleball out there into that wind, too. Thought he hit it really hard off the bat and trackman says he didn't quite get all of it but sounded funny too yeah here comes reese moore he takes high and out of the zone for ball one moore is iowa's dh today caught yesterday's game curveball for a strike outer portion of the zone one and one Reese with a single yesterday. A couple of ground outs. A nice opposite field base hit. Two balls and a strike. Here's the pitch to Moore. Breaking ball up and in around the hands. Ball three. Yeah, and Reese has a chance here. 15 of the 25 walks coming into this game from Bruni were to left-handed hitters. So has a little bit of a harder time locating because he wants to come to that left-handed batter's box. 3-1 is off the plate outside, and there it is, John, a walk to Reese Moore. Second walk drawn by the Hawkeyes today. Good discipline there, just missed off the outer edge of the plate. Here is Connor Hennings. Back-to-back -back starts for Hennings. 
three in a row if you go back to St. Thomas, four in a row if you go back to Michigan. Connor starting in left for the Hawkeyes today. Batting 360 on the season, nine hits and 25 at bats. Here's the 1-0 delivery to him. Low and in for ball two. Yeah, I'm kind of starting to see the, the guy I expected to see early in the season just as he's gotten some more reps and gotten a little bit more comfortable. There's a strike, outer half of the plate, two and one. Connor's got a decent gap in left center. Again, tricky to hit it over there unless you hit it on a sharp line. 2-1 pitch to Hennings. That's in the dirt. Ball three. Bruni's been a bit wild to start the second. Yeah, he was a little all over the place in the first inning, too. Got away with it. 3-1 is hit on the ground right to the second baseman. He juggles it. Glove flip to second. Over to first. He's safe at first base. Shift by Ohio State, and Hennings hit it right to Mershon, the second baseman, who was pinching in the middle. I kind of wonder if the umpire didn't distract his vision just a touch as that ball came right through the second base umpire and got on him. I mean, Mershon fields that clean. Even the speedy Connor Hennings isn't going to get there, but because of the bobble, it allowed him to just beat it out. That was 106 off the bat. Yeah. Hennings is caught in a rundown between first and second. He'll be tagged out at second base. As Bruni made the move over to first, Connor put his head down, took off for second. He's tagged out there, and for back-to-back -back innings, the Hawkeyes are tagged out at second to end any threat. We'll go to the bottom half of the inning right after this. Scoreless in Columbus. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. The silly moments, the proud moments, even the hard moments, they're what make life remarkable. And they're why Wellmark Blue Cross and Blue Shield is here for every moment. Committed to making healthcare better, more affordable, with more choices for care. And service and coverage that give you peace of mind no matter what comes your way. So you can show up for every tender moment, every brave moment, and every wouldn't miss it for the world moment. Knowing that Blue is here for you. Go to wellmark.com slash every moment to find a plan right for you. Feel the excitement as NASCAR returns to the Iowa Speedway with Powerball and the Iowa Lottery. Just add the double play bonus to your Powerball ticket for $1, then enter it in the VIP club, and you could win tickets to the sold-out NASCAR race or other exclusive race weekend prizes. Feel the power of NASCAR and double play today. Woohoo! See complete rules and details at ialottery.com slash VIP. Oak Knoll's mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care, a not-for-profit life plan community serving the Iowa City community for 57 years. Oak Knoll's conveniently located near the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, and downtown Iowa City. A proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics, visit oaknoll.com to learn more. Bottom half of the order coming to the plate for Ohio State in the second. Mershon will lead it off. He's their starting second baseman. Ton of speed here. Not just a little speed. That's what I'll, That's how I'll vary it, John. <laughs> Everybody's got speed for Ohio State. It's just a difference on a little bit or a lot. Well, we were talking about uh, you perhaps doing the, the Iowa State softball game this week, and we talked about how the game was faster. He's one of those guys that, as he takes a strike there, that you can know he's going to bunt and he can still beat you with it. Doesn't matter. <laughs> that's, Doesn't how, matter. that's how fast he is. <laughs> Iowa's defense is prepared for it as, as best they can with Tello. He's in on the grass. He's further off the line at third, shifted over to the right. Is Seegers and Mitchell as well to the pull side. 2 1 pitch from Morgan. Check swing, he went around. Home plate umpire will make that call himself, two and two. Iowa gives up on the shift just a touch as Seegers goes to the left of second base now. Out of the windup, here's the two-two from Marcus. Lined foul. Back a few rows. 
Much better crowd on hand today than last night. Weather conditions were miserable yesterday. Much better today with some carryover from Ohio State's spring football game just concluded. 2-2 from Marcus. Swing and a miss. Yeah, the, uh, uh, the flag isn't quite at full attention today, and, and the sun helps a bunch as well. We were down on the field pregame. I am in short sleeves today. You are, as always, much more prepared than I am. I, am, I was not warm down there. <laughs> I am heavily layered again. I'm hoping tomorrow to not have quite as many layers. Please. We have not had, have we had a warm game yet? Warm. Uh, Wednesday was, Wednesday was good. Wednesday wasn't bad. Wednesday was okay. We'll have to take a look at what the weekend weather will be like in Iowa City. I say, I don't care. <laughs> John will be, John will be away for uh, a few days. I, I am, uh, yeah, you're going to have to, you know, well, you, you though, you have replaced me in, in an outstanding way. Come on now. There's no replacing you, John. Big Rig will be great. <laughs> uh, so I, I, do you, so do you have him always, is he going to do the Wednesday game too? Haven't decided yet. Okay. But yeah, if you can get, even if you just get Big Rig for the weekend. Marcus Morgan with a strikeout of Isaac Kadena, the DH. Morgan worked quickly all the way through that, two down. I have my, uh, I've been very fortunate. There have been, uh, uh, at my 15th wedding anniversary and my 25th anniversary have lined up very nicely with uh, a business rewards trip that I have qualified for. And so I, good pitch there from Marcus. I have a, I have a milestone birthday in May. We have a milestone anniversary in May. And we get to go to uh, we get to go to Hawaii this week and celebrate both of those. A one pitch from Morgan is fouled off to the right. Nothing in two. So yeah, you'll be you'll be. Uh, I don't even know who the midweek game is. I didn't pay any I think attention. It's Bradley. So you'll get Bradley and Rutgers without me. I'll miss you, John. And I will not miss you this week. But <laughs> when I come it's back, you'll be in Hawaii. Yeah, when I come back, I will. Outside corner called third strike. Morgan strikes out the side. In the second, we're moving right along. The third inning coming up. It'll be Mitchell, Seegers, and Moss. We're back in just a moment. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Get a great offer on the stylish HRV or the Honda Civic, which car and driver called fun to drive. Honda, the brand named Kelly Blue Book's KBB.com best value brand for 2023. For a limited time, well-qualified buyers can get a 3.9% APR on a 2024 Honda Civic or HRV. So see your Central Midwest Honda dealer today. Honda gets the Midwest. See dealer for financing details exclusive against I and type our car and driver January 2023 based on 2023 brand image awards from Kelly Blue Book. Visit KBB.com for more information. Are aches, pains, or injuries keeping you on the sidelines? At Athletico, our movement experts are here to help you turn your setbacks into comebacks and create a personalized game plan for your recovery. With no prescription or referral needed, Athletico Physical Therapy is where your comeback story begins. Get started today by scheduling a free assessment at athletico.com. Proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Feel the excitement as NASCAR returns to the Iowa Speedway with Powerball and the Iowa Lottery. Add the double play bonus to your Powerball ticket for your chances to win exclusive NASCAR prizes. See complete rules and details at ialottery.com slash VIP. Boy, we got caught talking about Hawaii in the bottom of the second inning, and everything went well for the Hawkeyes and Marcus Morgan. Might as well carry it over to the, oh, yeah. the third with the offense. <laughs> yeah, see if the hitters, <laughs> see if, it's a, if it's a, it works for the pitchers or if it uh, moves to the hitters. But... Gable Mitchell to lead it off. Swings and misses at the first pitch of this go around as he was also in the box to end the second. Iowa's gotten picked off. They've been caught stealing at second base to end the first and the second. Not sure I've seen anything quite like that before. 0-1 is up and in for a ball. Yeah, both of those, even though neither one are traditional caught stealing, they both go as caught stealing. Mitchell batting from the right side. Out in front of the breaking ball, one and two. Yeah, we'll have uh, Brennan DeRiggi, will former Hawkeye from last year, NCAA regional qualifying team. 
One, two. Mitchell sends it right back up the middle. Off the pitcher's glove. A sliding stop by the second baseman, Mershon. But Mitchell gets down the line quickly. That'll be a single to start the third Iowa's first hit of the game. I was going to figure that was going to be just kind of Iowa's luck. It ricochets off the pitcher and second baseman makes a sliding catch and somehow gets Mitchell. But I think last night it probably does happen. <laughs> but it ended up bobbling off the heel of Mershon's glove and Mitchell probably going to be speedy enough to beat it anyway but let's just not get picked off this time Seegers squares to bunt puts it down the first base side Bruni picks it up underhand flip to first he saved at first base Seegers beat it out that's where you've been begging for that bunt <laughs> to go against the left handers John I have I have wanted that bunt for the better half of the season here and Michael executed it perfectly. I think we're going to get a review, but uh, at first glance, I thought he was there. Umpires come together between home plate and the pitcher's mound. Naturally to the eye, it looked good to us up here. I don't even care if he's out. I mean, obviously, I'd really love to have from the rally perspective, but boy, great execution from Michael there as that, that bunt was, was perfect. Uh, gave him a chance and I know that was one of the things that uh, Coach Heller challenged some of his speedier guys of, you know, I'd really love somebody to get a bunt hit today. And Raider Tello volunteered, but nobody seemed to think that that was uh, really going to happen. <laughs> so we are in a review. Top of the third, as it stands right now, to be first and second with nobody out for Cade Moss in a scoreless game with Ohio State. Yes, as I was going to finish my thought, Brennan DeRiggi will be joining the broadcast uh, this next week while you're gone, John. Uh, John Swisher will fill in for me on Saturday uh, as Rutgers comes to town. John Swisher and Brennan DeRiggi will have the call on Saturday. We'll get right back to it when you get back from Hawaii. So what are you looking forward to the most about Hawaii, John? I don't know if I take you as much of a dancer. Um... <laughs> A beach guy. I don't know much about the Hawaiian cuisine. I can't really help you out there. We are uh, we are zip lining on one of the days, and so, so you're into that. The flying Hawaiian zip line <laughs> course or something. Yeah, it, uh, it it looks fantastic, and so that'll be that'll be a ton of fun. I'm sure there uh, there there might be an afternoon that's spent uh, spent on a neighboring golf course and. That's what I figured you'd be doing the whole time. And we'll find a place to hike, I'm sure. They called him safe as he comes out of the review, so. That's good. Two aboard, nobody out. So, yeah, we'll have uh, we'll have some fun. And, and, you know, obviously with this, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to get a travel around. I do volleyball. Um, my wife doesn't get, a, doesn't get a go to some of the places. Not that, you know. Your Mo wife doesn't want to go to Champagne. Not or? that Mobile or Oxford are necessarily uh, <laughs> tourist destinations, but uh, but yeah, Hawaii will be more fun. Here's Cade Moss. Looks like he was showing bunt, pulled it back. The pitch was out of the zone. Runners at first and second. Nobody out for Iowa in the third. Ohio State with quite the defensive alignment here, and Coach Sutherland will come out of the Iowa dugout and talk about things with his runner and batter. Well, because what you saw there was you saw the, you basically saw Ohio State come back off of both edges. The corners both crashed. Second base and shortstop both went to cover the first and third base bags, which allows the second base base runner to get a long way out there. And then Ohio State comes out, makes the call. Iowa's going to come out now and just make sure everybody's on board here. Don't let any, don't make sure the ball's delivered and make sure the bunt gets laid down. You know, pay attention to who might be sneaking behind you. And my wife did say maybe she would go to Mobile because she's never been to Alabama. So, she... I, I think that's the route that I went. Oh, sure, I'll go to Mobile because I've never been. Yeah. Uh, we were fortunate enough to go to Jacksonville, Alabama again this year. So I've been there twice now. And uh, to your wife, I think she could pick better destinations <laughs> like Hawaii. If you have, if you haven't, if you haven't ticked them all off yet, Alabama might not be the first one you go tick off. <laughs> 1-0 pitch to Moss. He bunts it hard to the left side. Bruni comes off the mound, picks it up, throw to first, gets Moss by just a step. Really good bunt by Cade. Runners advance to second and third. Iowa in business now in the third with one out in the top of the order coming up. Well, and Iowa took advantage there of, of Ohio State changed the bunt coverage there. And so 
third baseman uh, Pedrini, instead of crashing in and went back to cover the bag, Cade kind of line drive that bunt. If uh, if Pedrini would have been charging like he had been before, that's a whole world of trouble. Would not have been a good bunt in that situation. Here's Andy Nelson. Andy's hit by the pitch. Unfortunately, the ball gets away, but because of him getting hit by the pitch, Mitchell was coming down ready to score, but the bases will be loaded now for Tello and one out. I don't know that I want Andy taking a pitch right now. In the foot. Yeah. Lower limb or just taking a beating. <laughs> yeah. I suppose that's not going to not gonna further his issue. But Well, here comes Raider Tello with an opportunity for Iowa to throw the first punch this afternoon. A hawk on every base and one out. Bruni stays in the stretch. First pitch to Raider. Hit in the air, foul over to the right. That's a pitch he hit off for a home run yesterday. High, top, maybe out of the zone. Just didn't get up to barrel it. 0-1 is line foul over the Iowa dugout to the right. Catcher, oh, hold catcher, on. catcher interference. I was following the path of the ball, John. You saw something different. Umpire popped out, immediately calls catcher interference as Raider hit the catcher's glove, and that will drive in a Hawkeye run. Bases will still be loaded. Well, it was interesting because I was watching the ball over Iowa's dugout, and I saw, I saw Marty come out of the dugout pointing at the catcher. Iowa on the board first. It's one to nothing in the third. Bases stay loaded for Davis Cobb. And this is where you got to keep making it hurt. We've talked about these situations before where Iowa hits, you know, a sacrifice or something along those lines and doesn't get the base hit. That's something that can drive the, the dagger deeper. Yeah, a sacrifice fly here is not really what you're after. <laughs> and the Hawks are going to get one. Maybe. Fly ball to right. The catch is made. Seegers will come down the line from third. He'll score. It's two to nothing. Nelson gets to third base. Breaking ball low and out. Cop gave it a ride to right, but Oakley made the catch. 2 nothing Iowa runners at the corners for Huxdorf. Mm. Yeah, I mean he really didn't he really didn't give it a ride to right. It was just kind of miss hit it out there. And of course with the way the wind's blowing, he blows out deep enough to drive in that first run. But two outs for Huxdorf. Here's the first pitch that he sees. Outside, ball one. I mean, Iowa has a couple runs this inning, but again, there's a lot of a lot of first pitch, early pitch swinging. 1-0 is grounded foul down the line at third. That rode the line for quite some time. Huck stayed in the box. Thankfully kicked foul at the last moment. When even interesting for what Andy did there is he let it kind of come foul right in front of him. So clearly they could see something from their angle a little bit more. A lot of room in left center for Kyle. He's got a closed stance right now. The 1-1, one -one. Kyle squared to bunt, pulled it back, stayed high, 2-1. and one. Yeah, with as deep as, deep as Pedrini was and as speedy as Kyle is, he easily had a chance to drive in a run with that. Two balls and a strike. The pitch to Huxdorf popped up. Shallow right. Ooh, this could be trouble, though. The three come together. It's the right fielder, Oakley, who had the play in front of him. The right fielder makes the catch for the third out. Iowa leaves two on. Could have been a massive inning, but Iowa does get on the board first. Two-nothing Hawks. We're back for the bottom of the third right after this. This is Iowa baseball from Learfield. Our mission at Open All is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, CEO. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served the Iowa City area for 57 years. Oakville is located near University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, Hancher Auditorium, and downtown Iowa City. Visit our website at oakville.com to learn more. We're a proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Go Hawks! When it comes to your health, you need the full picture. That means the right diagnosis and the right treatment right from the start. I'm Aaron Bowes, pediatric neurologist with University of Iowa Healthcare. Here, we're working together every day to advance medicine so you can get the best care. 
With more research, more clinical trials, and more treatment options than anywhere else in the state, the University of Iowa Healthcare is changing medicine and changing lives. Learn more at UIHC.org. For a taste of unique flavors you'll love, stop by Molly's Cupcakes in downtown Iowa City for homemade cupcakes, cookies, cakes, bars, and coffee drinks. Molly's Cupcakes is a proud supporter of the Iowa Hawkeyes. 2-0 Iowa as we get to the bottom of the third. Stevenson will lead it off for Ohio State, then they'll go to the top of the order. Our good friend uh, Jordan chimes in and says that uh, poke bowls and seafood are some things to get in Hawaii. Uh, Jordan doesn't know you like I do, John, unfortunately. <laughs> Hopefully my wife's listening and she can take notes on the on the food. Well, see, you need to report back what the, what the high-quality uh, hamburgers and chicken strips and pizza from hawaii how yeah, about that yeah hopefully there's some good beef somewhere yeah. <laughs> hawaiian pizza john is that fancy at all no no all right marcus morgan back out for the third he takes uh first pitch strike to stevenson nothing in one no vegetables just if it's if it if it involves a vegetable it's just a hard no <laughs> absolutely out pineapple and ham wouldn't do it yeah that's a fruit well, the pineapple, Are we getting closer? The pineapple, no, pineapple's a fruit. That's a hard no. Another strike from Marcus. <laughs> We're mixing in Hawaii every chance we can get here. So I think that might be the trick. It's going to be hard to keep doing this the rest of the season, though. If this keeps working for Marcus, we're going to keep throwing it out there. So. 0-2 oh, from Morgan. Looked Ooh. good, but it was just a touch low. Uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Looked in the zone on our on our grid. It was still good Hawaii talk for Marcus to pound the zone. <laughs> Even if he didn't get the call. Here's a floater over to Cop at first. Davis, the catcher, playing first base today, knocks it down, bodied it up, took one step in front of him and tapped the bag for out number one. That breaks the streak for Marcus. He had struck out four Buckeyes in a row, but continues to uh, set Ohio State down. We'll go to the top of the order now. Take a good, good relatively easy out there. Is Davis, uh, we joked about it yesterday, he doesn't have his chest protector on, but corralled it and pointed it toward the bag on the 61-mile-an-hour line drive. Back to the top with Lipsy. Swings at the first pitch. High fly ball to left. Connor Hennings underneath it. He's got his sunglasses on. Connor makes the catch as the wind was pushing that ball away from him. Two down. That ball moved 15 or 20 feet in the last... I have no relative height, but I, it was halfway down to Connor already, and that ball then just started sliding towards center field, and he just had to keep tracking it over. Has to be incredibly tough for all outfielders today. First pitch strike from Morgan to Kazmar. You figured he'd be taking after the relatively quick inning for Marcus so far, and so it's a nice job there for Marcus to throw that strike. Wind up in the 0-1, too far outside, 1-1. One one. They threw a ball, do we need to get back to Hawaii? <laughs> well, we'll see how the rest of this inning plays out. Ooh, oh, low man. and in. Boy, that, that's a strike, that's, is what that is. Yeah, that's a strike. Call the ball for now. And we're not really getting much of the high part of the zone. If you take away the low, you just get the middle third as this is hit well to center now. Huxdorf going back. He's at the track. He's at the wall, and it's gone. Home run for Kazmar to straightaway center. If Marcus can't throw it high and he can't throw it low, he's going to have to go middle to get a called strike, and that's what he did there, and Kazmar drove it to center. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a pretty huge difference. You know, you're ahead 1-2 instead of 2-1 and Huck made a heck of an effort to try to get that as that ball just went 402 and he was climbing the wall out there but yeah if, if you don't get the bottom third of the zone or the bottom knee of the zone huh. two to one I was still leading in the third here's Gravelin the batter for Ohio State Two outs, bases empty. Here's the 0-1. Squared to bunt and pulled it back. Wind couldn't help us on that one, could it? 
it pushed it toward Huck a little bit. And that's where I thought he might be able to, he was going to climb the wall and get it because I mean that it didn't didn't carry over by much. And matter of fact, it hit the batter's eye and bounced back onto the field of play. And didn't quite blow over to where Huck was. One ball and two strikes, swing and a miss. Gravelin goes down on strikes. Morgan with another strikeout, his fifth of the game. Ohio State hits a solo home run to get one back. It's two to one Iowa. We'll bring you the fourth right after this. This is Iowa baseball from Learfield. How do you become America's best-selling brand? Let's break it down. Innovative tech means smarter and safer driving. Intelligent all-wheel drive will keep you ready for anything. And built Ford tough trucks will always get the job done. Plus, come into your local Ford store today and get super low APR financing, big cash back, and great lease offers on Ford's full line of cars, trucks, and SUVs. That's Ford, and that's how you become America's best-selling brand. Sales claim based on calendar year sales. American Equity salutes today's hero of the game. As a proud sponsor of the ongoing recognition of our military during Hawkeye games this season, please join American Equity in thanking all who have served our country. American Equity is more than just retirement savings and income products. They are committed to providing you best-in-class service and high-quality retirement income that helps deliver the independence to dream and reach your goals. To learn more about American Equity, please visit their website at American-Equity.com. As a proud sponsor of the Iowa Hawkeyes, U.S. Cellular wants you to make the most of today by choosing game day traditions first and scrolling later. U.S. Cellular, built for us. John Evans and John Leo in the broadcast booth in Columbus. Top of the fourth, Iowa leading Ohio State 2-1. to one. Hawkeyes with two runs in the third. Ohio State with one in the bottom half of the inning. Did you see when Caitlin Clark was in... California for the Wooden Award, I assume. She was uh, had dinner with Jason Sudeikis and got a AFC Richmond jersey. I, I missed part of that. I, I saw that she was out there, but I, I didn't uh, know about that note there, John. It was uh, a jersey with her name and number on it. Jason Sudeikis, big fan of Caitlin Clark and the Iowa women's basketball team. Pretty much followed him the, the whole year. Certainly from a, you know, became aware when he came to the game in Iowa City and and then uh, was visible at a number of other games after that. Reese Moore leads off Iowa's fourth inning. 1-1 one, one pitch to Reese. Swing and a miss. Breaking ball on a left-hander that... Well, that's because the pitch before that that got called a strike was... 1-2, catches the outside corner. Reese is down on strikes. Trying to figure out this strike zone right now. Not getting much high, not getting much low, but getting sometimes. Well, that's the problem. The, yeah, the problem is everything's just sometimes. Like, there, there's your high outside strike. Hmm. And breaking in from that side, so. With Hennings in the box, right-handed hitter, the 0-1. Swing and a miss. Nothing in two. Chase that one. That one's low. Bruni settling in. No balls and two strikes. Hennings looking to protect. Here's the pitch. In the dirt. Good hang by Connor to not go after that. One and two. Pitch clock still running. Whoever's running the pitch clock is failing miserably right now. You have to help me out here, John. I don't even see the pitch clock. Where is it? On the flagpole. Oh, wow. Because it should be. I haven't seen that <laughs> all weekend. 1-2 is another called third strike. High outside corner. And Hennings is out number two. All right, the Hawkeyes just have to adjust, I suppose. See if Marcus can throw that when uh, he's on the mound. Well, yeah, I'm all for a big strike zone, but it, it hasn't been a big strike zone through three innings. Like now, pitch clock. Why is the pitch there? They reset it finally. That's really hard to see out there. It is today. It was better last night in the dark, but yeah, in the, 
Gable Mitchell is the batter. It's 2-0 and on Mitchell. With the white practice facility behind it and the white numbering and the gray pole, yeah, it's not, uh, it's not visually blasting out at you. Two balls, no strikes. The pitch to Mitchell. Swings over the top of the breaking ball. Two one, grounded foul over the left. Two to one, Iowa in the fourth. Ohio State will have the middle third of their order coming up in the bottom half of the inning. Gables trying to keep it going for the Hawkeyes. Here's the two two, line foul over the right. Heads up. Hit the top row of the bleachers here. Got over the protective net. The the protective net here at the stadium doesn't really do a good job of protecting those in the bleachers right below us. 2-2 to Mitchell, popped up, right center. Oakley goes back, center fielder Stevenson is over. He'll make the grab for the third out, a couple of strikeouts. Iowa goes down 1-2-3 in the fourth. 2-1 to Hawkeyes, we're back for the bottom half right after this. This is Iowa baseball from Learfield. Whether you're building a backyard fence for your family's new best friend or firing up the excavator for your next commercial project, a free and simple call can save you from expensive fines and even save your life. Call 811 at least two days before you start your next project to have underground utility lines located and marked. At MidAmerican Energy, your safety is our number one priority. So make it your priority to call 811 before you dig. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Hey, it's your friend, social media. You know, where I showcase the cool life of sports stars and friends. But don't fall for the editing and good lighting because we all have struggles and challenges like with alcohol or drug use, gambling, or our mental health. Talking about it is a sign of strength. Maybe you don't know who to talk to. Your Life Iowa can give you resources or treatment options. Get free 24-7 confidential support. Call, text, or chat online at yourlifeiowa.org. A message from Iowa HHS. Today's game is brought to you by Bud Light, proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Iowa leads Ohio State 2-1 to one as we get to the bottom of the fourth inning. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. Pedarini, Oakley, and Mershon come to the plate for the Buckeyes. Marcus Morgan back out for the fourth inning. So far, Marcus has fired three innings, given up two hits and one earned. He struck out five. First pitch is lined into left for a base hit. One hopper in front of Hennings. Leadoff single for Pedarini. He's got two of Ohio State's three hits today. Yeah, Marcus had the high cutter, and Pedarini did a nice job. Just stayed with it. Served it up into left field. His last hit was the ground ball to Seegers, so done a good job going the opposite way. Shift on for Oakley now, another left-handed hitter. Breaking ball outside to start the at-bat. Nice baseball stadium here for Ohio State. They've got the chair back seats, about five rows deep. Closest to the field, then a concourse area where you can walk around and bleachers seating all the way up towards us in the press box. The bleachers are in the shade today with the sun up over our heads and behind us a little bit and the, the overhang that provides that shade and the seats with the chair backs in the sun today. I suspect you'd want to be in the sun. I would prefer that. Pedarini, seven of 10 stolen bases. Marcus has thrown it over there twice. Ohio State was seven stolen bases yesterday. Tough pill to swallow for Iowa. 1-0 delivery, swing and a miss. Oakley chased that pitch in the dirt. Good pitch by Marcus to kind of go against what, what the book might say. And caught Oakley cheating a little bit. This is lined into center. Huxdorf moves over. Kyle makes the catch for the first out. Here comes a quick throw back to first base, but Pedarini gets back. 
Good contact by Oakley, but Huck able to track it down. Yeah, good contact, but no real elevation on it. Huck was played pretty well to start with and was able to track right back over and grab it. Now, if you're Raider Tello, you probably need to get a couple feet in on the green grass here. Here he comes as Mershon is the batter. He swings at the first pitch. High drive to right, but this will go foul. Mershon, a, a bunt candidate, you know, a, a soft ground ball to the left side. He can beat it out. So Tello right now, even with the bag, but creeping forward. Here's the 0-1 from Marcus. It's outside one and one. Yeah, I don't know. Short of a rocket ship right at somebody, I don't know how you're going to double, double him up. Mm -hmm. So make sure of an out here either way. Check swing. He went around. And it's one and two. Ohio State having a tough time laying off the pitches that are low today from Morgan. Moss setting up outside. Here's the one, two. Hit his spot, but it was off the plate away. Two balls and two strikes. One out. Bottom of the fourth. Iowa leading two to one. Yeah, see if he goes back to the breaking ball here. Grounded foul to the Iowa dugout over the right. Did just couldn't get him to uh, couldn't get him to miss the couldn't get it to miss the bat. Out of the stretch, throw over to first base. So Pedarini was coming off the bag. Statistically, don't have the breakdown, but it, it seems like Marcus has been throwing a lot of sliders today. Throwing a ton of cutters, and he, he's really done a good job varying his pitches up. He's back to the off-speed, missed low, three and two now. All of Marcus's pitches have some movement on it. Just depends on how much. Full count. Runner takes off. Here's the pitch. It's grounded foul once more. I'd like to see Marcus. He's thrown uh, throwing the cutters and the, the slider here. See him go back if he's if he trusts the fastball. Let's see him try to throw it past him here. First, he'll throw it over to first base. Yeah, pitch clock's counting down. The pitch clock is useless today. <laughs> Another full count. We'll wait for it. Morgan's going to draw some attention from the Ohio State fans as often he's he's been keeping the runners close to first base today. But it's necessary. Runner takes off. Here's a 3-2. It's outside for ball four. Well, my argument would be if you want us to stop throwing the first, stop stealing bases. <laughs> right. Since I doubt they're going to agree to that trade. All right. Hmm. Couple runners on for Ohio State. Isaac Kadena comes up. Left-handed hitter. Freshman. He didn't play yesterday. He's the DH today. One out for the Buckeyes in the fourth. Iowa leads it two to one. First pitch swinging is Kadena. High fly ball to left. Hennings underneath it. Connor makes the catch for the second out. It's a big, a big one pitch out there for Marcus. In a little bit of a spot here and. Got a big first pitch out, fastball through that cutter again, out and away. Huge for Marcus's confidence if he could find a way out of this. Two outs, runners at first and second for Ryan Miller. First pitch, low and in. Good backhand stab by Moss. Marcus taking his time, the 1-0 pitch, swing and a miss, 1-1. One one. Beautiful breaking ball. Iowa women's basketball allegedly hosting a couple of high-profile transfers this week. Ooh. 
transfer possibilities. There you go. Morgan's 1-1 is hit on the ground right to Seegers at short. He'll race to second base, touch the bag, and the Hawkeyes are out of the jam in the fourth. 2-1 to one, Iowa. We're back for the fifth inning right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Even the simplest act can set a chain of good in motion, like choosing Delta Dental of Iowa for your dental and vision insurance because we invest in your community. So whether you get your plan at work or purchase it through us, you make a difference for others. Visit SharingHealthySmiles.com and choose Delta Dental for your smile, for your health, and for your community. American Equity salutes today's hero of the game. As a proud sponsor of the ongoing recognition of our military during Hawkeye games this season, please join American Equity in thanking all who have served our country. American Equity is more than just retirement savings and income products. They are committed to providing you best-in-class service and high-quality retirement income that helps deliver the independence to dream and reach your goals. To learn more about American Equity, please visit their website at American-Equity.com. At the Gamer at Home, Wimmer's premium quality hot dogs and sausages will score with family and friends. Take the highest quality beef and pork and you get the best tasting hot dog. Wimmer's, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. That was clearly not a Wimmer's hot dog that was running last there. No, they had a, they had a what, what, what do you want to call that? A concession stand race? I concession don't know what, stand race, I like it, yeah. What do we have? We had a pop and a hot dog and what else was out there? Popcorn, I don't know. Popcorn but, got yeah. second, soda won. If you, to, if you had to rank those three, John, how do you how do you go there? I know you like your Mountain Dew. Well, yeah, that's true. Those uh, all of them in their moments. I mean, I live downtown, and you know, you walk into you walk into our building, and freshly popped popcorn is pretty darn good. Michael Seegers to lead off Iowa's fifth. He's got a one and one count. Wednesday, though, I went with the the fresh two dollar hot dog at the ballpark at Banks, and that was phenomenal. I'm pretty picky when it comes to hot dogs. 1-1, one, one, Seegers popped it up right side. First baseman giving it a look, but that'll get out of play. Foul, one and two. I think I can only really eat a hot dog at, at a sporting event. I don't. Do you ever eat them at home? No, not anymore. Yeah. Not, not, not now that the girls are long gone. Sure. <laughs> I can't. I can't imagine eating one, cooking one of those up at home. <laughs> I'm just more of a ballpark dog guy. <laughs> One, two, here it comes to Seegers. Inside, ooh, called a third strike. Michael backed off the plate, and he's out number one. Dotted the black of the plate there on the inside. Comes Cade Moss with one out. Base is empty for the Hawks in the fifth, two to one. Iowa leading, trying to get back to even in the series. First pitch to Cade, that's in the dirt ball one. Let's see, popcorn, I'm a, I'm a big popcorn guy if you if you mix in a bag of M&Ms. <laughs> Warm popcorn, they kind of melt towards the bottom. So you like the uh, sweet and salty version. Yep. All right. There's strike one to Cade inside low portion of, I guess, the zone in this inning. It's one and one. Man, that's the, it is, we are all over the place. So, uh, yeah, that's. Another strike, this time high outside corner. At least that one's actually in the zone. It's been in the zone before today. And well, yeah. That's the thing. Moss forced to swing at that, low and in. Missed it. Back-to-back -back strikeouts. I don't love the way that, that the zone is trending. It it seems like the Iowa hitters aren't as confident. And they're not sure well, if you're what's called a strike, what's not going to be one. If you're Bernie, I just keep throwing breaking balls right now because he's getting a ton of whatever he's throwing is has got the umpire convinced on the edges. So stay on the edges, throw breaking balls. Perfect. Strike one on low outside corner. Boy, it's been quite a few in a row now. Yeah, I just... It's a great game plan from him right now. Just keep keep going. Umpire likes what he's seeing. There's a fastball. All the strike outside 
edge. Nothing in two for Nelson. That one even took the glove outside. He, he wasn't able to frame that one. He took the glove away and still got the call. It was a strike, but... That's inside. Touch high as well. Andy takes it. Iowa could really use a base runner here. This, this inning's going quickly. Counts one and two. Bruni out of the windup. The left-hander deals. Line drive into right, and it's down for a base hit. Oakley let it drop in front of him. Nelson is on for the third time today, his first base hit. Yeah, and he's just, you know, he was, he was all Big Ten, Big Ten player of the year type numbers before the, before the injury. So good to see him back and kind of getting those things going again. See if Iowa can get things going with two outs. Here's Raider Tello. First pitch to Raider. Lined right to the third baseman. Caught by Pedarini. They'll do it for the top of the fifth. Two to one, Iowa with a one run lead. We're back in just a moment. This is Hockey Baseball from Learfield. Nestled on the rolling greens of the iconic Finkbine Golf Course, Bump's Restaurant is open to the public year-round. Whether you're swinging by after a round of golf or just in the neighborhood, Bump's is your go-to spot for scrumptious sandwiches, shareable appetizers, and mouth-watering pizzas. Quench your thirst with our selection of local craft beers. Or let our full bar serve you a refreshing cocktail to toast to your game. Or just because it's 5 o'clock somewhere. Our happy hour from 2 to 6 p.m. is the perfect 19th hole. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to catch our latest daily specials. And here's a little insider secret just for our radio listeners. Thursdays are not to be missed at Bump's Restaurant. It's BOGO Happy Hour. Buy one, get one free on select beverages from our happy hour menu. Whether you're a diehard golfer or just love a great meal with a view, Bump's Restaurant at Finkbine Golf Course is your destination. We're currently open Wednesday through Saturday. Swing on by today. Bump's at Finkbine Golf Course. Great food, great drinks, and the best views in town. See you at Bump's. When corn grows fuel, Iowans win. Ethanol is a renewable fuel that's better for our environment, our health, and our wallets. Share your winning moments using hashtag Iowans win, and you could win even more from Iowa corn. Bottom of the fifth inning in Columbus, Iowa leads Ohio State 2-1. to one. Marcus Morgan out for another inning of work. Through four innings, he's allowed three hits, one earned. He's walked two, but he struck out five. Be 9 1 and 2 come to the plate for the Buckeyes. Stevenson and then Lipsy and Kazmar. So three straight lefties for Marcus to face. Wind in the fire. Swing and a foul ball. He swing at that and that hit him? He's kind of acting like it. I'm thinking so, yeah. I mean, somehow the ball got out in front of uh, in front of the home plate, so. Maybe it, maybe it hit the bat and then down off his foot? Looks like it, okay. yeah, it didn't hit off Cade or it didn't hit off the umpire. At least neither one of them flinched, really, so. Who knows what the check swing of last night. <laughs> I won't go there. No balls and a strike to Stevenson, who grounded out his first time up. That pitch is high. One and one. Try not to hyper fixate on the... Uh, on the strike zone for Marcus in relation to Bruni at this point. Here comes the 1-1 from Morgan. That's on the outside edge. That's a strike, 1-2. and two. Good spot. Really hard for a left-handed hitter especially to do anything with that. Allows Tello to go back at third and not worry about the bunt. Marcus just missed outside with the Slider let it go a bit too early Stayed away from the left-handed hitting Josh Stevenson. Yeah, I mean the word we kept using yesterday that I stole from coach McGrath It's got to be believable 2-2 two -two. Swing and a miss strikeout of Stevenson to start the bottom of the fifth. That was very believable And that's what Bruni's been doing is he's he's not only made believable pitches for the Hawkeye hitters but He's made a believable pitch for the umpire 
gotten a little bit of an expanded zone. Marcus hasn't really gotten that, but Marcus hasn't been on those edges as much either. So, You think that was the cutter from Marcus, or was that the true fastball? That's the true fastball yeah. there at 93. Looked very good from Morgan. Here's Lipsy. Top of the order for Ohio State. Strike one. High portion of the zone. Lipsy walked in the first, lined out to Hennings his last time up in the third. Marcus fires outside, ball one. Wind up in the delivery is grounded foul over to the right side, one and two. Hack getting in his another wind sprint. He got in a good one during batting practice, too. He's doing cardio. Doing his cardio. Morgan's 1 2. Missed high and out. Unbelievable. Yep. Needs to too, be believable. Yeah, too far. Yep. We can go back to Hawaii talk if we need to. Two two, same spot. Three and two. The toughest part about the Hawaiian adventure is getting there. Well, actually, getting home is worse than getting there. Ugh. The jet lag pretty bad. It was your five or six hours time difference, and then the overnight. Three two, ground ball to second. Mitchell's got it. Gable steps, throws to first. Two down. Well, that worked pretty well. Great call, John. <laughs> Just had to bring back Hawaii talk to get Marcus through that batter. <laughs> I mean, should we should we start with Hawaii talk? I mean, Henry hit the home run last time, so we might need to carry it through uh, this one <laughs> here as Kazmar comes up. He's responsible for Ohio State's lone run with the 400 foot home run to center. Two to one, Iowa in the fifth. I like smooth operator as his walk up song too. Unique. Low for ball one. So are you are you trying to tell me, John, you wouldn't eat the. Uh, roasted pig that they that they cook <laughs> underneath the ground <laughs> uh no no i'll be ordering pizza that night <laughs> 1 0 pitch from morgan that catches the outside corner it's a called strike one and one yeah that'll be uh that'll definitely be be whatever the local pizza place is or whatever chain store is closest to the hotel <laughs> i knew that answer before i asked it john really good spot again from marcus but just too far outside the Trying to come in the back door with Kazmar, who's got a ton of power. That was, I don't know if I'd describe him with a ton of power. He's, he caught one. Better pitch from Marcus in the zone. It's two and two. Infield retreats back to their normal positions after being in the shift. Here comes the 2-2. Two -two. Grounded to cop at first. Davis is, picks it off the turf. He'll get to first base. It's a 1-2-3 inning for the Hawkeyes in the bottom of the fifth. And Marcus Morgan with a little bit of passion coming off the mound there. That was great to see. We'll have to ask, we'll have, you'll have to ask Derigi because Brennan Derigi was great at standing there at first base and waiting for the guy and then touching it right before he got there. <laughs> <laughs> just, a little, just a little jab. Maybe something he can give to Davis we get ready for... Uh, next week two to one iowa leads it we're moving right along top of the sixth coming up in columbus this is hawkeye baseball from learfield hi i'm gary dolphin and if you want your home to be exceptionally comfortable during these cold iowa winters and hot humid summers you need to turn to dave lennox and your local lennox home comfort specialist lennox has been serving iowa consumers since 1895 when dave lennox built his first furnace in marshalltown and lennox is still building its high efficiency furnaces and air conditioners there today for the best home comfort system you can buy it's lennox and your local lennox dealer lennox and the hawkeyes now there's a winning combination how do you become America's best-selling brand? Let's break it down. Innovative tech means smarter and safer driving. Intelligent all-wheel drive will keep you ready for anything. And built Ford Tough Trucks will always get the job done. Plus, come into your local Ford store today and get super low APR financing, big cash back, and great lease offers on Ford's full line of cars, trucks, and SUVs. That's Ford, and that's how you become America's best-selling brand. Sales claim based on calendar year sales.
The University of Iowa Healthcare has the game plan for your same-day health care needs. If you need treatment for a common illness or minor injury, visit one of several UI quick care or urgent care locations throughout the Iowa City Cedar Rapids corridor. Their care and expertise will help you get back in the game. UI Healthcare is proud to sponsor your Iowa Hawkeyes. New pitcher into the game for Ohio State as we get to the top of the sixth. Iowa leading 2-1. to one. Gavin Bruni's day is done. The Buckeyes will bring in a freshman right-hander from Milford, Ohio. This is Chase Harrell. One and one on the season, nine appearances, four starts with a 458 ERA, 19 and two-thirds innings, 21 hits, 12 runs, 10 of those are earned, 12 walks, 14 strikeouts. Opponents hitting 263 against him. Fastball is going to be right around 90. Then he's got a whole array of pitches, curveball, slider, changeup. Um, but the, he doesn't really hit on those. So, again, we say it a lot, but Hawkeye hitters will have to show that discipline of look fastball, ignore the uh, ignore the other stuff first, and then uh, come back to it when you need to with the expanded strike zone. Bruni out of the game. Iowa into the Ohio State bullpen now in the sixth. It was a pretty decent start for Bruni, allowing just two runs. Yeah, two runs, one earned, three hits, two walks, six strikeouts. So probably everything you wanted, 30, 77 pitches, 45 strikes. Iowa averages nine runs a game, which is first in the Big Ten. Cop lines this deep to right, but that will go foul. Absence of Sam Peterson is pulling that runs per game average down just a touch. Iowa scored five yesterday, only two so far today. Haven't been able to deliver that knockout strong punch uh, in a few games, it, it seemed like. We well, saw that same issue with, with Michigan. You know, just, uh, you know, could string together hits, but, uh, you know, this, this Iowa lineup doesn't have tons and tons of power anyway, and then you take Petey out of it. Michigan weekend, you took, you took Andy out of it also. 1-2 to Cop is inside. Counts even at 2. Our strike zone's gotten so big, we really want non-strikes to be called strikes now. <laughs> yeah, the, the Ohio State fans were begging for that, but it was inside. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Cop knocks it foul. Good at bat by Davis right now. Yeah, and he's stuck with a couple good pitches. Showed good discipline. If, if the umpire was going to call the last pitch a strike, he might as well just walk back to the dugout. But... Mm -hmm. Fought that one off, and, and that one was low and in the zone, so I was going to be alive for the fastball. Fastball is pitched, and Davis lined it foul just a couple feet right of the line. Got three seconds to pitch. Two, one, great ball. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who's up here in the booth running that one, John. I'm trying to be quiet with that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Two balls and two strikes. The pitch to Cop. He fouls it back to the screen. Our broadcast set up a little different than, than in most places. <laughs> Somewhat similar to Iowa City, actually, is there multiple yeah. people in this room with us? We got a lot, we got a lot of friends today. <laughs> yep. We've got the stat crew, we've got local media, we've got Ohio State marketing. We've got non-local media. Come on now, call everybody. 2-2, two -two, Cop hits it in the air to left, right to Lipsy. He's got it for the first out. Good at bat by Cop. Saw a ton of pitches. Not quite rewarded though. We've got not, we've got not, we've got non-local that showed up to watch Brody pitch and didn't find out until after. <laughs> he, he rang me back in, but he's he's uh, here to watch a good college baseball. Yeah, he just wants a good there game. Go. <laughs> Here's Kyle Huxdorf with one out in the sixth. Iowa leading two to one. First pitch to Kyle is in the dirt. That's what happens when it's just not the two of us in the booth. All of a sudden, we've got people we can drag into the broadcast right. again. Really nice view for us just to the left of home plate. 1-0 pitch to Huxdorf. This is grounded left side. This will be a tough play. Third baseman will let it go. It will roll down the line and stop. Fair. They tried to let it go, and the ball came to rest. On the baseline. And it tried to leak foul. It just didn't have enough juice to get there. Good job from Huck to get down the base baseline. <laughs> About time Iowa gets a base hit that doesn't leave the infield. How many did we give up yesterday? 
We started with one today, too. Yep. Here's Reese Moore. Oh. Swinging bunt for Huxdorf. He's on first base. We'll see if Iowa can get their run game going. Hawks have a really nice uh, speed game. Huxdorf at first base. First pitch to Moore. That's high. Ooh, called a strike. Nothing and one. I'm going to take Trackman away from you. Turn my computer so you can't see it. You might as well because that pitch hasn't necessarily been called a strike, though, either today. At times, it's been about 50%. The high third has been called a strike. Reese might like that pitch, though. Well, I'm not so sure if you saw. He flipped a coin. He looked it real quick. <laughs> there you go. One ball and one strike to Moore. Here's the pitch from Harrell. High again. This time called a ball, two and one. I mean, what's been interesting, I mean, it's been the last two weeks. The, the opposing team's pitchers have worked the edges of the zone better. Mm -hmm. And so it just feels like we see more of those calls. Line drive into center, but Stevenson tracks over. He's got it for the second out. Huxdorf will go back to first base. Pinch hitter coming in for Iowa. This is Ben Wilmus. He'll bat for Hennings. You know, Iowa pitchers have been a little bit more of the miss or middle variety as opposed to dotting up those edges a little bit more to get the calls. And Michigan and Ohio State have been more on the edges, so we've just seen more of those pitches for them. Doing my best to be diplomatic about it. Well, it does make sense. I don't think you're speaking any falsehoods, John. <laughs> Certainly try not to. <laughs> so Ben Wilmus comes up batting for Hennings in the sixth. Assume that Ben will go out and play left. Be a fair assumption. <clears throat> ben takes a strike oh. at the knees. <laughs> That's one way to describe it. Ben pinch hit yesterday and struck out. Hochstorf still at first base with two outs. Two to one Iowa in the top of the sixth. Each team with three hits. Pitching has been the highlight today for both teams. Try another quick move over to first base. Huxdorf not going anywhere. I'd like to see Kyle go, but. Not able to. Wilmus fouls off the 0-1 pitch. I'm a little surprised. Harold's numbers to the plate aren't really good. I mean they're fine, but they're not they're not like crazy great. Yeah, and you've got the you've got the stat on it just visually looking at him. He, he does look slow with a, a little bit of a higher leg kick that takes some time to bring the ball home. Huck's lead is about to the cut of the grass at first. No balls and two strikes to Wilmus. I'll throw it over again. Harrell back on the rubber. Here's the 0-2. Fouled off. Good hang by Wilmus to stay alive. Battling in the box. Giving Ben a lot of room in left center, but Stevenson and Lipsy can cover a lot of ground in left and in center. Have to see infield really playing him to pull. Outfield, not as much. Another 0-2. Huck takes off. Here's a chopper left side. Pedarini charges at third. He'll throw on the run to first base to get Wilmus. And that will do it for the top of the six. Two to one, Iowa. Bottom of half of the inning coming up right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Want to test drive U.S. Cellular's award-winning network? It's free for 30 days. Want to test drive U.S. Cellular even faster? Just get a race car driver to be your personal chauffeur. Just let me buckle my... Whoa! Hey, my calls and data work great out here. Test drive U.S. Cellular free for 30 days. Named the leader in 5G coverage in Iowa. You can pull over now. 
Please. U.S. Cellular, built for us. Terms apply. Awards based on open signal independent data. Visit uscellular.com for details. Brown Deer Golf Club offers a pure golf experience. Manicured bent grass fairways with tees and greens carved into gracefully rolling landscape. Challenging, yet extremely playable. Improve your game with PGA instruction and our full-service pro shop. Treat yourself to Bunker's Bar and Grill for lunch or dinner. And our scenic Greenview Banquet Room is perfect for weddings or any special event. Brown Deer Golf Club, a stunning country club setting at affordable public rates. For comprehensive coverage of college baseball and softball all season long, tune to Sirius XM Big Ten Radio Channel 372 in the car and on the all-new Sirius XM app. Sirius XM is the home of your favorite team and conference, including live games plus interviews and analysis. So cheer along online with the Sirius XM app and listen to your favorite team anywhere. Get a free trial at SiriusXM.us slash Big Ten Radio 2023. Bottom of the sixth inning in Columbus, two to one, Iowa holding on to a lead. Marcus Morgan returning to the mound. It'll be Gravelin, Pedarini, and Oakley. Three, four, and five. Good part of the order coming up for Ohio State. When I said Sirius XM, my computer tried to text somebody that I have no idea who they are. Fortunately, it didn't go through. <laughs> <laughs> Darn technology. Gravelin swings at the first pitch, hit into center. Huxdorf moves back, now comes forward, loses his hat, and makes the catch for out number one. It's another one of those, it's a big, giant swing, and so your instinct as an outfielder is to say, okay, I got to go back. And then you realize it comes off like a wiffle ball, and you need to charge forward instead. Fortunately, with Huck's speed, Ben Wilmus better hurry because Marcus is ready to deal. <laughs> Wilmus enters the game in left. One out for Pedarini. Base is empty. First pitch from Morgan. Is a ball low and in. Right around, but didn't get the call. Outside from Marcus that time. Just a touch high maybe as well. 2-0. Pedarini's 2 for 2 today with a couple of singles. There's a strike, low portion of the zone, two and one. Ground ball, foul past first base. Just to the right of the line. Ohio State had one of those yesterday. The triple in the corner? Yep. Davis playing off the line at first, but he's deep enough or maybe he could make a play on something right down the line if, if it's hit softly enough. Morgan deals outside, and the count's now full for Pedarini. Out of the windup, here's the 3-2. Outside. Morgan tried to snap the slider. It stayed way out. Pedarini on for the third time today as he walks in the sixth. One out for Oakley. He's 0 for 2 today with a strikeout. Iowa with some light activity in the bullpen. Anthony Watts getting loose. Morgan goes high. Heard Coach Heller talking pregame as Sean McGrath comes out of the Hawkeye dugout about trying to be quick with a hook. Marcus has been so good, though. You see what that really means when you get in the heat of it. Best uh, start for Marcus in, in quite some time, probably since the first one of the year as we go back and look. Marcus, five and two-thirds, two hits, nine strikeouts against Ball State in the opening weekend. So this is certainly his best start since then. Right now, five and a third, three hits, three walks, six strikeouts. Marcus picked up the win in that uh, victory over the Cardinals. 
lone win of the year. Let's see if Marcus can find that, find the breaking ball down in the zone. Get Oakley to ground out to Mitchell and send him to the dugout. Major shift on for the Hawkeyes right now defensively. Seegers is playing to the right of second base. We've talked about some of the challenges of covering the bag to turn two on an on a alignment like this. Foul back to the screen. There was that breaking ball that you're talking about, John, and Oakley fouled it off. Yeah, you're gonna want to get that down. That fortunately, gonna, that fortunately was outside enough that that was a good good miss if you're gonna miss that height. This one's hit well to right center. Huxdorf moving over. Kyle's there with ease. He'll make the catch for out number two. Just jammed him enough with the cutter. We talk about it with some Iowa hitters. I think I think Oakley missed that just a bit. That was a middle middle and dangerous spot for Marcus, but he gets the out. Two down. Yeah, he got it in just enough, especially if you had him set up where maybe he was leaning away and so you're able to get it on just just barely on the inner half. But. The batter is Mershon, another left-handed hitter. Low and out for ball one. Iowa leading two to one in the bottom of the sixth. Clean, well-played baseball game to this point. Here's the two one. Here, here's the one zero. -oh. That's low and in. It's two and zero oh now. Marcus slipping outside of the zone a little bit now in the sixth. That was pretty close though. Two zero. -oh. Fouled off, two and one. Yeah, just, you know, objectively balls and strikes out of the zone, but I, I agree with what you're saying. He's been very close. We're competitive with his misses. Believable. Believable, yes. Here's a ground ball, right side. Mitchell tracks over to get it in shallow right. He throws it to Cop at first base, who recovered nicely. Davis went after it initially, but Mitchell, with his wide range, able to make the play for the third out. We're through six in Columbus. It's two to one Iowa. We'll see if the Hawkeyes can get a couple runs as we head to the seventh right after this. This is Iowa baseball from Learfield. Heard about this new type of television experience from Epson? It's called the Epic Vision Ultra Laser Projection TV. It combines a new type of laser projection technology along with a unique Epson Silverflex screen to produce an epic 120-inch 4K Pro UHD picture that's up to four times bigger than a traditional 60-inch TV. There's no better way to watch live sports, and watching Iowa basketball play live on this big, bright TV is simply awesome. If you're a sports fanatic like me, you need to check this new Epson TV out for yourself. Visit Epson.com slash TV to learn more. Get a great offer on the stylish HRV or the Honda Civic, which car and driver called fun to drive. Honda, the brand named Kelly Blue Book's KBB.com best value brand for 2023. For a limited time, well qualified buyers can get a 3.9% APR on a 2024 Honda Civic or HRV. So see your Central Midwest Honda dealer today. Honda gets the Midwest. See dealer for financing details exclusive against I and Type R car and driver January 2023 based on 2023 brand image awards from Kelly Blue Book. Visit KBB.com for more information. Hawk fans, experience your home away from home at Coralville's finest all-suite hotels. Homewood Suites and Home to Suites by Hilton each offer guests spacious suites, complimentary breakfast, 24-hour fitness center, pool, hot tub, guest laundry, and convenient locations. Let their warm and friendly staff take care of you and your family when you visit Hawkeye Country. Gable Mitchell lead off for Iowa in the seventh. Two to one Hawkeyes. Mitchell batting from the left side against the right-handed Harrell. Pitch in the dirt for ball one. Pay cash money for a good drag bunt right now. Yeah, who was it earlier? Was it Seegers? Seegers, Seegers. had the bunt? Yeah, yep. to the, he, I mean, he pushed it to the right, but I, I see where you're talking about. If he can really pull it down that first base side, be in good shape. Got a deep second baseman there. He's going to get it past the pitcher. Mm -hmm. Two balls, no strikes for Mitchell. Gable leading off the Iowa seventh, up two to one. There's a strike. Oh. Below the knees, but called a strike two and one. Mm. That's why when I said Marcus was close, Marcus was in that area. 
Cable appears to be a better hitter from the left side. We'll do a statistical poll one of these days. Takes upstairs there, three and one. You agree with that assessment, John? You feel like he's more comfortable maybe from the left side? Maybe not statistically better one way or another, but it seems like he's more comfortable yeah. from the left side. Well, I, when I asked him earlier in the year, he's, you know, he just said it's because you know, obviously he gets more swings left-handed. Three, one. Mitchell lines into center. That looks good. It's down for a base hit. Iowa's fourth of the game. Now, it's been a little different as, as Iowa's faced just a ton of left-handed starters. Um, that's flipped Gable over more often than normal, but... Um, you know, he, he's been, he, typically, historically, he's swung more from the left side. You know, and, you know, we talked about Michael Seeger's got that hit. Another chance here. You may see if he can execute another bunt as Iowa tries to double up a lead here. Michael in the box with Mitchell at first base. Nobody out. Top seven. Iowa up two to one. First pitch to Michael, he squares to bunt, bunts at first base side, another good bunt. The pitcher comes off the mound, underhand toss to first. It was a high lob, and Seegers is out, but he does sacrifice himself for Mitchell to get to second base. Exactly what you needed there, another good bunt. The difference that time was the, the right-handed pitcher. It's it's more of an easier move. He's, he's rolling that way, so the flip was easier when Michael did it with the left-handed pitcher before. But in any event, he did the job he needed to do. That's more like it for Michael, you know, just those those uh, small attention to detail plays that that he can make offensively. Here's Cade Moss, base hit into right. Mitchell hung up between second and third. He'll get to third base, but have to stop there. It's a base hit for Moss. Yeah, it's unfortunately not a great read off the bat from Gable of knowing where the second baseman was nowhere in that area. That ball was through all the way. But Gable just didn't quite know where the defenders were. And so he, when you don't know, he hesitated correctly because you don't want to run into and out at this point. Uh, just unfortunate that uh, you, you were just mentioning Michael Seegers and the attention to detail on that. That's one of those things is as a base runner, you got to look around, see where everybody is so that you're ready for that. Really good point, John, because if, if that second baseman Mershon is in his normal spot that's that's a line drive right to him and so naturally is Gable the base runner he's thinking okay that's probably right to him but if you go through your pre-pitch look around you'd see okay he's tight to the middle anything uh, over to that right side is probably getting through yeah Gable the second baseman is like that's right to where I'm playing now Gable the second baseman didn't have the scouting report on Cade Moss <laughs> right <laughs> and which was saying hey we're going to shift him up the middle because Cade's corners down there by the Yeti in the 330 sign <laughs> so it was uh, uh, again it, it's the way you should do it if you don't know you go back and you protect yourself and, and so he did exactly what he needed to do after the fact just maybe a little bit more prep work beforehand and he'd have he'd have been able to score there Iowa leading Ohio State 2-1 in the seventh. Runners at first and third for the Hawkeyes. One out, top of the order. Here's Andy Nelson. Andy's reached all three times today. Singled his last time up in the fifth. One of the hottest batters in the Big Ten. First pitch to Andy. Takes it low and out. Ball one. Yeah, and you're going to... you got to imagine Harrell here is going to try to work the bottom of the zone if you're... If you're Andy, you kind of want to lift it. Normally, maybe not a huge double play threat, but in, with the limited speed right now, he a little bit is. 2-0 and as the slider's way outside. What uh, Coach Bo talked earlier about in a hitter's count like this, really hone in on the perfect pitch. He called it a lunchbox. You know, you pick your spot, make it small, and if you see it in that tunnel... Two balls, no strikes. The pitch to Nelson, grounded to third. Diving stop by the third baseman. He'll throw to second and out. Called out at second base. Moss went sliding in. The run scores down the line. It's three to one. Boy, that's a really close play at second base. Are they sure that he was out? Uh, we're going to challenge it. So, no, we're not sure that he's out. Kate will go back to second for the time being. The umpires will come together. Really good stop by Pedrini. Dove towards the line to st to uh, keep the ball in the infield, then threw it to second. A long throw for the force. Would have had pretty much no shot to get Andy at first, even with the limited speed. Well, and that's what I was watching. I was more worried about Andy getting down the line because that's one of those, as a competitor, you flip to 100% and you start going. And, and 
making sure Andy was going to be okay getting down the line. Uh, so I wasn't really watching the play at second base as much. Very, very close. Now, Cade slid through the bag, but there was no tag applied after that. It's called out on the force. It's 3-1 to one Iowa no matter what, but it'll just depend on if there's two runners on and one out or one runner on and two outs. Raider Tello will be the batter. And you're not going to commit? You're just going to say maybe? I'm saying maybe. I, I, it, lo it looks safe to me, John, but... Our man Zach says he thinks he's safe. Now, do you have enough to overturn it? <laughs> Zach, he is biased. I am also somewhat biased. <laughs> pure, pure political moves are going on up here. Of, John, of, you're the one that keeps us in check, though. You're the you're the realist. You're the hedging, you're the rational one. Hedging both sides of the fence here. I like it. <laughs> I am full on admitting that I have black and gold bias. <laughs> I really hope Kate's safe. How about that? <laughs> I'll say that. Umpires are in the review session. Uh, it's right behind home plate, so directly below us. We can't see them. We'll have to wait for them to appear. So you haven't been to Rutgers yet, but that's basically where we sit for Rutgers, right? It's a very interesting view of the game. Interesting. You're so nice. It must be miserable. It must be terrible. <laughs> field, le field level behind home plate is a very strange place to, to sit, and you will catch at least one foul ball right in the uh, right in the windshield, right in front of you. Are you inside? Is yeah. it inside there? Called him out. Cade is out at second base. All right. Three to one, Iowa with the lead in the seventh. Two outs for Raider Tello. Andy Nelson's at first base. Good play by Ohio State. Get that force out at second. Yeah, Cade didn't hit it hard down the line. It was well positioned. Or, I'm sorry, Andy didn't hit it hard down the line. We're going to get a pitching change here to pitch to Tello. Mound visit for the Buckeyes. Oh, that's a hook. We've... <laughs> yep, with Iowa leading 3-1, to one, we'll have a pitching change. We'll take the pitching change break now. Hawks up by two with two outs. Raider Tello will see a new pitcher right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. The big game. Family. Friends. We know you count on Alliant Energy to deliver the safe, reliable energy you need. Whether you're watching the game, cooking your famous burgers, or leaving a light on for loved ones. For us, it means going beyond the expected to make sure we're planning for the energy you need today and tomorrow. That way you can keep your eye on the ball and focus on what's most important to you. Find out more at AlliantEnergy.com slash Powering Beyond. Want to test drive U.S. Cellular's award-winning network? It's free for 30 days. Want to test drive U.S. Cellular even faster? Just get a race car driver to be your personal chauffeur. Just let me buckle my... Whoa! Hey, my calls and data work great out here. Test drive U.S. Cellular free for 30 days. Name the leader in 5G coverage in Iowa. You can pull over now, please. U.S. Cellular, built for us. Terms apply. Awards based on open signal independent data. Visit uscellular.com for details. Top of the seventh, Iowa leading 3-1. to one. Ohio State with a pitching change with two outs and runner at first. Raider Tello will be the batter. He'll face a freshman right-hander. This is Zach Brown. 3-0 on the season in 14 appearances with a 3.86 ERA, 25 and two-thirds innings, 30 hits, 13 runs, 11 of those are earned, 12 strikeouts, I'm sorry, 12 walks, 11 strikeouts, opponents hitting 3.09 against him. So he's kind of a let-you-put-it-in-play sort of guy. Fastball is going to be right around 90 plus or minus. He'll throw a slider and a changeup off that. But again, if you watch him throw, he gets kind of dropped down off to the side a little bit. So Right-handers are going to have to force that ball out over the plate, and then you know, with this win, you can drive that ball to right as it starts to drift over the plate still and do some damage, but mostly going to throw fastball. Uh, and if you can maintain some zone discipline here, it doesn't have a ton of great control. Is this a little bit like Jack Young, a delivery, you think? Close? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Tello will... Watch him fire his warm-up pitches, and he'll get the first crack at him with two outs in the seventh. I think when Zach Brown's not doing his music, he could aspire to be Jack Young. <laughs> yeah. That's got to be uh, something in the notes for Ohio State, Zach Brown. <laughs> Although spelled with an H on the uh, back end of Zach, unlike um, the musician. There you go. Okay. So just brothers. 
<laughs> that, was how, that was how they differentiated. Yeah. You, Zach with H, come here. Zach with K, you stay there. <laughs> All right, here's Raider Tello. He's in the box. Nelson at first base, two outs. Iowa's added a run in the seventh. It's three to one. First pitch to Raider. Low and out, ball one. Sharp fastball, missed the zone. Be interesting to see what the Hawkeyes do with Marcus Morgan in the seventh. Let's get another run or two before we worry about that. Tello hits a ground ball right side. That's through into right field. Nelson's around second. He's going to stop there. Oh, get back to the bag, Andy. Throw to second. He's safe. Ooh. Nelson with a nonchalant turn around second. Well, again, I don't think it's nonchalant. I think that's the that's the speed Andy's moving at right now and, and wasn't going to go to third on the play and, and so needed to get back. And by the time he jammed the brakes up, Second baseman Mershon walked in right behind him and throw was right on it. Mershon immediately goes to his ears, but then shook his hands at, mm -hmm. at the dugout and said, no, he didn't get him. But a good job there from Raider, 106 off the bat and did just exactly what we talked about. Got a fastball right in the middle of the plate and just drove it to the right side and beat the shift. Chance for Cop to do the same thing. Runners at first and second now for Iowa, two outs. First pitch to Davis, line drive, caught by the first baseman, hit right to him, and Miller drops down to a knee. That would have been beautiful down that right field line. It's too much first pitch swinging. <laughs> don't, don't love it, John. I don't. There's the third out. We'll go to the bottom of the seventh right after this. Three to one, Iowa with the lead. Time to stretch things out in Columbus. Hey, Hawkeye fans, it's time for the Blue Bunny seventh inning stretch. You know what to do. Get up, stretch those legs, and go enjoy the best seventh inning stretch tradition of all, Blue Bunny ice cream. Blue Bunny is a proud sponsor of the Hawkeyes and the seventh inning stretch. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Our mission at Open All is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, CEO. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served the Iowa City area for 57 years. Oaknell is located near University of Iowa hospitals and clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, Hancher Auditorium, and downtown Iowa City. Visit our website at oaknell.com to learn more. We're a proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Go Hawks! The big game, family, friends. We know you count on Alliant Energy to deliver the safe, reliable energy you need, whether you're watching the game, cooking your famous burgers, or leaving a light on for loved ones. For us, it means going beyond the expected to make sure we're planning for the energy you need today and tomorrow. That way you can keep your eye on the ball and focus on what's most important to you. Find out more at AlliantEnergy.com slash Powering Beyond. Welcome back to Hawkeye Baseball. If you or someone you know needs support now, call or text 988 or chat 988lifeline.org. All right, so we have our answer to the question that we posed in the top of the inning. What will the Hawkeyes do with Marcus Morgan? They will take him out after six. A really good start for Marcus. He exits the game and gives way to new Hawkeye pitcher, the right-hander, Anthony Watts. 1-0 with a save in 11 appearances, a 4.09 ERA, 22 innings, 13 hits, 11 runs, 10 earned, 18 walks, and 31 strikeouts. Opponents hitting Anthony at just a 161 batting average. And you mentioned it, Marcus was outstanding, especially for a guy that didn't know he was going to start today. Six innings, three hits, one run, three walks, and six strikeouts on 93 pitches. 3-1 Iowa in the seventh. Watts, first pitch, strike one to Isaac Kadena. Now, yeah, see, so you aren't complaining about that one. Because that's because I didn't look, John. <laughs> I like the idea of taking track man away from me. <laughs> one and one. I'll know if it's... Uh, I'll know if it's out of the zone if I if I hear something from you. How about that? You there can tip go. your computer. I rely on that technology more than my eyes. <laughs> Watts out of the windup. Here comes the 1-1. Floated high and out. Ball two. Yeah, again, the relative goodness of Marcus's outing was two and two-thirds against Michigan, 95 pitches. Six really clean innings of baseball, 93 pitches today. Incredible. 2-1 from Watts. Fouled back. It's 2-2. Two two. Nice with a little sunshine will get you. Yeah, must, sunshine that's a little what, warm. That's what it is. Really happy for him. I'm going to take full credit for it for the midweek interview. 
midweek interview talking about Hawaii. Yeah, a lot of things. All we, for you, a lot John. of things we helped him out on. Fouled back again, two and two. But the the core of your point there is, we're very happy for Marcus. Really good start. Well, that's you know we've talked about it before. For this team to start to reach the potential that they have. 2-2 two, two from Watts. That's high, ball three. The starting pitching needs to be better. Mm -hmm. And you got four and change yesterday from Cade. And, um, but this this outing is what you expected from this, this starting staff. And so... Full count pitch from Watts. Hit high and deep to right. That's gone. Whoa. Ed did not need the assistance of the wind. Kadena with a home run to right, his first of the season. It's three to two. It went 4-10. Just 101 off the bat, but 4-10. I was waiting for that uh, that white car to or white truck out there to catch it in the uh, the driver's side window, but. And that's the problem when the pitches around after two strikes or even before two strikes really aren't believable. Oof. All right. Three to two in the bottom of the seventh. Here's Ryan Miller, another left-handed hitter. There's strike one from Watts. Anthony trying to get dialed in now. Yeah, just need to... Well, he just needs to get ahead. Miller got his hand started on a pitch low and in. Ball two. Two one from Anthony. Swing and a miss. Two and two. I mean, Marcus was 60 or 59 strikes in his 93 pitches, so. You know, north of 63, almost 65% there, probably. Count even at two, the pitch from Anthony. Lined foul over to the left. Northwestern on top of Maryland, 11 to nothing. Whoa. Bottom of the seventh inning, 11 nothing Northwestern. Wow. That's surprising. Penn State up on Indiana again, eight to five. Anthony gets the swing and a miss strikeout. Purdue six to nothing over Michigan State. Nebraska five nothing over Rutgers. Minnesota first game of the doubleheader eight to nothing over Michigan. Still early, but big start there. Actually, Michigan won the first one eight to one. So they got through that game quickly. And what time they start that one? Eight to one. It's eight <laughs> thirty. One out for Stevenson. Watts throws it by him to start the at bat. Why is the pitch clock stopped? I'm so confused. Let's try to figure that out somehow. There's strike two from Anthony. He's getting into a rhythm now. Why, oh he, and two. What do you like here, John? I like the fastball away. Okay. No balls, two strikes. Watts out of the windup. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Anthony, high wattage Watts with another strikeout. Fastball away. Get it away from that left-hander. Don't let him don't let him pop one up in the wind. Anthony's kind of walking around. He's got that, he's got that swagger, maybe a little bit of anger right now. When he works like Vital She's does, he gets up there and he goes. When he gets the finger point from the umpire, he's ready to move. Top of the order, here's Lipsy. Offers it the first pitch and knocks it foul over the left. Maybe, Three to two Iowa in the seventh. And maybe all his the home run did was irritate him. So as long as he stays controlled in the zone. Out of the wind up, the 0-1 from Anthony. Swing and a miss. Low fastball and he went after it. And it's nothing in two. Yeah, I don't know. That one was the changeup, I think. 88 mile an hour changeup, John? Woo. Yeah, that's kind of where he always... He's mid-90s with a fastball. 94 there. Tried that same show pitch that he struck out the last hitter on. One ball and two strikes. 
Potts back on the rubber. Out of the windup, here it comes from Anthony. Change up. Ooh. Lined foul over to the left. Lipsy back in the box. Watts looking for his sign. Yeah, I think that he's the, got it. The changeups is plus here. One ball and two strikes with two outs. Bases empty. Here's the pitch from Watts. High. Out eye level, two and two. Uh, tried to snap the slider. Didn't uh, didn't get it in there. Two balls and two strikes. The pitch. Oh, Ooh, what are we high doing? High for ball three. Looked good. That pitch has been a strike nearly all day today. We'll go with a full count pitch. Here it comes from Watts. High ball four. Good grief. All right. We talked about this yesterday after the check swing, alleged check swing, is the check swing didn't walk him on the 3-2 pitch, and the check swing didn't do anything now here to Kazmar. So. Fresh count. Kazmar comes up. He's got a home run today. Fly out and a ground out otherwise. Runner at first base with two outs. Watts deals strike one. Backdoor pitch there. It's nothing in one. We don't need Anthony. Well, hopefully don't need Anthony to throw seven innings, so pitch count doesn't really matter. Just buckle in, get an out. Soft move over to first base. Iowa leading three to two, bottom of the seventh. Tight baseball game in Columbus. Well, because the pitching has been so good, we haven't worried too much about the running game today, but need to make Lipsy stop moving his feet over there. He's leaning too. Now he's come to a stop. Here's the 0-1. High and out. Again, a lot of times it's just it's varying what you're doing. If you, you know, hold it for a second, hold it for five seconds, you know. Use the pitch clock to your advantage. If you if you need to throw it to first, throw it to first. 1-1. Fouled off over to the left. Great pitch from Watts. Busted him inside with that. Yeah, that was the. That was just a good ball moving all the way inside. Now you got to finish the at bat here. What do you like? Fastball out again. Change out. All right, one ball, two strikes. Here's the pitch from Watts. Hit in the air, left side. That will find the seats foul. And we'll do it again. Probably see the changeup again. Maybe a show fastball away, but. One, two. Grounded to cop at first base. Davis leaps. He's got it. He'll touch the bag for the third out. Ohio State gets one run back. We'll go to the eighth with Iowa leading 3-2. to two. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Our mission at Open All is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, CEO. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served the Iowa City area for 57 years. Oaknell is located near University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, Hancher Auditorium, and downtown Iowa City. Visit our website at oaknell.com to learn more. We're a proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Go Hawks! Even the simplest act can set a chain of good in motion. Like choosing Delta Dental of Iowa for your dental and vision insurance. Because we invest in your community. So whether you get your plan at work or purchase it through us, you make a difference for others. Visit SharingHealthySmiles.com and choose Delta Dental for your smile, for your health, and for your community. Hawkeye Baseball is brought to you by Riverside Casino and Golf Resort, home of the Draft Day Sports Lounge, a luxury hotel and spa, five restaurants and more, just minutes south of Iowa City. 3-2 to two, Iowa in the top of the eighth. 
Huxdorf, Moore, and Wilmus coming to the plate for Iowa. Zach Brown continues to pitch for the Buckeyes. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. You look out at the scoreboard, uh, whenever Iowa scored, Ohio State has scored. Thankfully, the Hawks put up two in the third. I, uh, Ohio State only answered with one, but uh, zeros have been matched by zeros and tallies have been matched by tallies. I guess then I'd take two zeros and call it good. <laughs> yeah, I'd be fine now. <laughs> Here's Kyle Huxdorf to lead off Iowa's eighth. First pitch, Huck hits in the air down the line and right, but that will move foul into the Hawkeye bullpen. Got a fastball right down at the bottom of the zone there. So if you're going to first pitch swing, that's kind of the lunchbox area that I'm looking at. Oh, one to Huck. That comes in the zone. It's a strike, nothing in two. Kyle shakes his head, probably thinking, hmm, I don't know how often I'm going to swing at that. But now nothing in two. He'd have to if it's thrown again. Right-hander deals. Kyle bloops into shallow right. Second baseman Mershon goes back, makes an over-the-shoulder catch for out number one. Well, if he'd have swung at the 0-1 pitch, he might have killed Pedrini as far as inside as it was, or Mitch Bowe down the line, because that was about all he was going to do was rip that right down the line. Reese is probably excited to see a right-handed pitcher again for a change. 0 for 2 today, but... Moore walked in the second. First pitch, he lines sharply left side into the netting. Reese has a ton of power to right. He can scoop underneath one and drive it. We'll see. Here comes the 0 1 outside. Reese lays off. He is the longest home run of the year, right? Jack that Jacksonville State one? Yep. What was it, 4... Yeah, 473? Seven. Is that what we started yeah, calling him? Yeah, I called him Mr. 473. Chopper fouled a first, 1 and 2. Sidearm Sports with the Ohio State feed still has this in pregame. Mm. Nope, nope, there we go. Brown deals the 1-2. Moore watched it drop low and out. Count even at two now. Reese trying to find a way on. A lot of infielders to the right side of the infield. Second baseman Mershon playing in shallow right. Kazmar, the shortstop, to the right of second base. He's in shallow right center. As Moore has worked a full count, first baseman Miller hugging the line, third baseman Pedrini's playing basically at shortstop. Here's a 3-2. Moore watched it go outside, ball four. Good really night. nice at bat. Yeah, really nice job there from Reese to battle with it. Stay involved, see if Ben Wilmus can get himself going here. Yeah, Reese's home run. Iowa hit the three longest home runs in that game. Reese Moore went 473, Huck went 452, and Wilmus went 437 20 to 1 and not a single one of those were the hardest hit ball of the of the game Blake Guerin had one at 109 Oof. Here, just here, a double here is Ben Wilmis grounds it to second base the throw to second for one on to first double play four six and three That'll do it for the top of the eighth. Nothing going for the Hawkeyes there. It's three to two. We're back for the bottom half of the inning right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Nestled on the rolling greens of the iconic Finkbine Golf Course, Bump's Restaurant is open to the public year-round. Whether you're swinging by after a round of golf or just in the neighborhood, Bump's is your go-to spot for scrumptious sandwiches, shareable appetizers, and mouth-watering pizzas. Quench your thirst with our selection of local craft beers. Or let our full bar serve you a refreshing cocktail to toast to your game. Or just because it's 5 o'clock somewhere. Our happy hour from 2 to 6 p.m. is the perfect 19th hole. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to 
catch our latest daily specials. And here's a little insider secret just for our radio listeners. Thursdays are not to be missed at Bump's Restaurant. It's BOGO Happy Hour. Buy one, get one free on select beverages from our Happy Hour menu. Whether you're a diehard golfer or just love a great meal with a view, Bump's Restaurant at Finkbine Golf Course is your destination. We're currently open Wednesday through Saturday. Swing on by today. Bump's at Finkbine Golf Course. Great food, great drinks, and the best views in town. See you at Bump's. You need one here? No, I'm done. Bottom of the eighth inning in Columbus. Iowa leads Ohio State 3-2. to two. Trying to hang on today. It'll be Gravel and Pedrini and Oakley. They let off the sixth inning. They didn't score in the sixth inning. Did not score in the sixth. Watts will try to keep him off the scoreboard in the eighth. Gravelin is 0 for 3 today. Really nice day in Columbus. A little bit cool because of the wind, but sunny and great crowd on hand today. Much fuller than yesterday. First pitch strike from Watts. Whoa. I'll tell you how nice of a day it is in about 45 more minutes. <laughs> yeah, we, we have a really nice night planned, and it's reliant on a Hawkeye victory, on the ceiling <laughs> that can be achieved. Here's one and one. Ben Dete getting loose in Iowa's bullpen. One ball and one strike out of the windup. Here's a delivery from Watts. Fouled off over to the right. Great catch by a fan. Three rows from the top. Does the right thing, turns over his shoulder, gives it to a young child. Counts one and two. Here's the pitch from Anthony. High, very close. I just don't know how Gravelin doesn't swing at that. I guess it's got enough break where it doesn't look like it's a strike until the very end, but just out of the zone high. Really nice looking pitch from Watts. Here comes the 2 2 with Moss setting up outside. Ground ball, base hit to right. <laughs> Caught too much of the plate, and it's a leadoff single for Gravelin. And the Buckeyes in the eighth. Pedarini's been an awfully tough out today. Two singles and a walk. Interesting to see what Ohio State elects to do with him. Tello is thinking possibly a bunt. First pitch from Watts, dropped low for a ball. He's also been a willing opposite field hitter too, so. Singled at Seegers on a hit and run and then just lined one out to left back in the fourth. 1-0 catches the outside corner. It's 1-1. One and one. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> we're, we're to the wobbly portion of the, uh, of the program. <laughs> we'll take it. Short lead at first base. Runner takes off anyway. The 1-1 one -one is outside. Called a strike. Throw down to second. Is knocked away by Seegers. Mitchell is there to back it up. And he keeps it from going into center. It's a stolen base for Ohio State. Yeah, that one's on Anthony. He just never stopped him from moving again. He got kind of a creeping, creeping start. He just kept walking, kept walking. And boy, if the pitcher's not going to stop you and you've got that kind of speed, then you take it. Watts gets the strike call in the outer portion of the plate. It's one and two. Nobody out. Tying run at second base for the Buckeyes. Watts checks the runner at second and then deals. Foul, fouled back to the netting. Yeah, Pedrini's got to swing at that after the two pitches that have been called strikes on him. Doesn't have much choice but to expand his zone. Does a nice job going out to foul it away. 1-2 from Watts. Lifted foul out of play. Left side we will do it again.
High pressure situation for the Hawkeyes in the eighth. Up three to two, but the tying run at second base, nobody out. Watts with a one and two count. Comes set. Delivers home. High and out. Great snag by Moss. Keep that from going to the backstop. It's two and two. What a catch there from Cade Moss. Pedarini is not an easy guy to strike out, so you're going to have to keep working and just stay down in the zone. Two balls, two strikes. Anthony fires. Blooped into center. Huxdorf sprinting forward. Seegers going back. Michaels got it for the first out. Really good pitch there from Watts. Changeup had him fooled and out in front. Fortunately, then Seegers was in good position. And now Oakley is a high strikeout guy, so he's a guy you can go back and try to get here. Got some power with nine doubles and three home runs. Cade Moss will walk out to Watts and they'll have a they'll have a chat. I don't know if this is a uh, Ben looks ready, so I'm not sure if this is a full delay tactic to get to to get to Ben and let the take come in or yeah, because Oakley's a left-handed batter. The, the next batter, Mershon, is a switch hitter, and then the Buckeyes go with three straight lefties. And Coach Heller is out of the dugout now. Looks like the Hawkeyes will be making a pitching change in the bottom of the eighth. Runner at second base, there's one out. It is three to two, Iowa. The Hawkeyes going to the bullpen. We're back after this pitching change break. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Let's be honest, we all like to be noticed. Picture yourself striding into Kinnick Stadium, radiating both style and comfort, while fellow Hawkeye fans can't help but ask, where'd you get that shirt? With pride, you point to the big screen and reply, it's authentic brand. Discover the remarkable difference that apparel with the authentic brand label brings. Ask for it by name at your favorite boutique, spirit shop, or retailer. Or shop online at authentic-brand.com. It's time for a change in your style. It's time for authentic brand. Tickets are on sale now for the High V Indie Car Race Weekend Concert Series. Saturday, July 13th, see Luke Combs and Eric Church. And Sunday, July 14th, see Post Malone and Kelsey Ballerini. Five in concert. One ticket per day gets you into a race and two concerts. Tickets on sale now at highvindiecarweekend.com. Iowa's call to the bullpen in the bottom of the eighth brings in the left-handed redshirt senior from Clive. This is Benjamin Dete. Nine appearances. He's 2-0 on the season with a save. 270 ERA, 10 innings, five hits, three runs have all been earned, three walks, 14 strikeouts with a 152 batting average against. Ben's got a nice mix of pitches. Fastball will be in the low 80s, but then a really nice changeup and slider to work away from the left-handed hitter that he's going to see. 3-2 Iowa in the bottom of the eighth. The batter will be Oakley. Mershon on deck, runner at second base and one out. Sounds troublesome. Mm. Been a dr drama-filled game the whole time. And Three to two games work out that way. Yes. <laughs> it just seems like Iowa hasn't had a ton of those uh, this year. They've been blowouts one way or another or high scoring back and forth types of games. Just a, just a couple of these low-scoring affairs that are tense with every pitch. Well, we've had actually we've had a couple in Big Ten play. The first, both the first two of Michigan were, and then uh, the Saturday game against Purdue was also mm -hmm. a, a tight affair where Iowa had the lead, and um, you know it felt like you were just kind of holding on for dear life. But I'm helped. in that stage right now. <laughs> first pitch to Oakley is a breaking ball up and in for ball one. He was not afraid to stick that elbow out at it either, so watch your spot there. Lefty on lefty matchup. This is what the Hawkeyes wanted. 
Tate comes set, checks on the runner at second base. 1-0 pitch. Swing and a foul tip. One and one. Showed him the showed him the high change right on the inside. Got his uh, line of sight off just enough that the uh, center center fastball was just foul tipped. Count even at one. The pitch from Detay inside corner strike two. Take the slider or the change up away now. You've got him inside. You know, Cade will be ready to be in the blocking position. Cade's moving outside. The one two lined into left. Wilmus is there. Ben caught it. He let it get deep right below his belt, and he caught it for out number two. Well, and that ball just kept slicing back at him, so he was, he was taking an angle toward left center field, and that ball just kept peeling right back at him. All of a sudden, it's right on his knees, and I don't think Ben exactly meant to throw that fastball center center. And Oakley did a really good job of just trying to go with it. 100 miles an hour off the bat, and Wilmus made a nice catch. Hawks are one out away from getting out of this jam the batter is mersh on switch hitter he'll go from the right side detay fires strike one inner half of the plate good start from detay runner at second base still with two outs three to two iowa bottom of the eighth yeah now you could probably start mixing him up with the slider change went off speed missed off the plate away from the right-handed hitter one and one the Hawkeyes will have Mitchell, Seegers, and Moss coming to the plate in the ninth. Stands right now clinging to a 3-2 to two lead. One ball, one strike. Here's the pitch from Detay. Hit well to center. Huxdorf going back right in front of the track. Kyles got it for the third out. As soon as that ball left the center field, I felt good about that one because he doesn't feel like he's got pop to get it out to that part of the park. Ben Detay comes in, does a great job. To keep Ohio State off of the scoreboard, we'll go to the ninth. Iowa leading three to two. Back in just a moment. This is Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. Equity salutes today's hero of the game as a proud sponsor of the ongoing recognition of our military during Hawkeye games this season. Please join American Equity in thanking all who have served our country. American Equity is more than just retirement savings and income products. They are committed to providing you best-in-class service and high-quality retirement income that helps deliver the independence to dream and reach your goals. To learn more about American Equity, please visit their website at American-Equity.com. Are aches, pains, or injuries keeping you on the sidelines? At Athletico, our movement experts are here to help you turn your setbacks into comebacks and create a personalized game plan for your recovery. With no prescription or referral needed, Athletico Physical Therapy is where your comeback story begins. Get started today by scheduling a free assessment at athletico.com. Proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Zach Brown will pitch the Ohio State ninth with Iowa leading 3-2. to two. At 7-8-9, Mitchell, Seegers, and Moss need some Hawkeye insurance in the final inning. Insurance would be good. It would be good. It, it's not necessary, but it would be preferred. How about that? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, you can uh, – that's like, it's like homeowner's insurance. You don't have to buy it if you don't want to, but – It's a good idea. You'd feel really, be you'd feel really good about it when you, when you had it and – yeah, well, I mean, Iowa got the insurance run in the top of the seventh. You felt really good about it then when Kadena hit one that tried to blast that white truck that was past the, <laughs> past the wall. You felt good you bought a little insurance. All right. Gable Mitchell to lead it off for Iowa. He'll go from the left side. Corners are thinking what I was thinking, so that might, uh, might not work quite as well. Bunt possibility for Mitchell. Middle infield playing very deep. First pitch to Gable, line foul down the right field line. Boy, I, I, I need to talk to, I talked to Coach Bo and I talked to Coach Sutherland beforehand. The, the first pitch swinging again here is a lot. 
And I, again, I, I know we're not really working pitch count on this guy so much, but we're also not swinging at pitches that are center center either. 0-1, Mitchell lines to left for a base hit over the leaping Pedarini. Gable is on to start the ninth. Somebody did say, and I saw Gable do it last time too. He He's getting some encouragement from the dugout because he was about two-thirds down the line and he pointed back at the dugout. So somebody's, and again, that's the part you want to see with this team. You know, just a lot of guys together. We'll see if Michael lays down a bunt again. I want to go back to Gable for a second. What What a... I don't really want to say surprise. I think it undervalues him a little bit there, but he has been a really nice piece to this Iowa offense this year. Defense we knew was great, but offensively very good. Really has been. Three for three today. Three for four, rather, today. And he stands at first base now. It could be a crucial insurance run. You know, he got his first home run. Uh, but, you know, he's just he plays with an energy. Uh, you know, he's not Sam Honar, but he, he brings things to the table that, that are really good. Seeger squares the bunt, pulled it back, and the pitch missed downstairs from Brown. Mitchell has a large lead at first. And the nice part, I think, the nice part for me watching Gable is he kind of knows who he is. You know, he doesn't go up there trying to hit home runs. Serves that ball into, into left field nicely and just, you know, takes it where it was and, and you know, takes the base hit. You know, he's had, a, he's had an opportunity to turn on one. Seegers takes a high strike. It's one and one now. Was thinking about the bunt, pulled it back. That's a tough pitch to bunt up in the zone. Yeah, you've got to start the bat high to really get that. But, you know, that's that's been the, the, the exciting part for Gable at the plate is he hasn't really tried to overdo anything. Early show of the bunt for Seegers. Mitchell takes off, and Michael fouled it off his foot. Yeah, that was an interesting one, too, because that was nobody really crashed. So that must have just been something Michael had kind of, I mean, it could have been some version of called, but third baseman didn't crash in on him. Now an interesting spot for the Hawkeyes now. The 1-2. Seegers chops it foul over to the left. Michael typically a good bunter, but I don't know if it'll be on with two strikes. It wasn't there. Yeah, I don't know that I put the bunt on, but now you kind of wonder, do you, how do you feel about a hit and run, uh, a run and hit sort of thing where if it's in the zone or around, you go ahead and swing and protect with Gable moving. We'll throw it over to first base. Mitchell dives back in. Seeger's crowding the plate, the right-handed batter's box. Which makes that inside parts where he's been a little, little vulnerable. Here's the one-two, way outside, backhand stop by Gravelin. It's two and two now. Now you're maybe into a little bit more of a game count. They're not going to pitch out on two-two. Uh, so you think he could go? Yeah, he, he okay. could go. Seegers could then you know, just protect, but you get some movement in the middle infield to give give some holes or create some different holes. 2-2. Two, two. Michael hits in the air to right. Down the line, Oakley giving chase, and it is just foul. He let it bounce. It was an interesting, yeah, there was no... You feel like he could have caught that, John? Is that what you're getting at? I don't know. Uh, I think if he dove, he had an opportunity to catch it. Especially in foul ground like that, what do you have to lose? Uh, yeah, and I mean, Gable wasn't standing on first base ready to tag up, so he had he had space and an opportunity to do it. Lengthy at bat, Brown gets the sign. Seager's in the box, Mitchell at first base, nobody out in the ninth. The pitch, Michael chops it left side, swinging bunt, this will stay foul. That had a chance to come back fair for a minute. It did. Brown did a nice job coming off the mound, the tall pitcher for Ohio State. He grabbed it foul. So I thought it had some strange spin on a couple of those hops. and To come back into it, fair ground. Yeah, I yeah. thought it had a chance to, to get back there if it just caught a, caught a little bit of turf on the spin. Good job from Michael to stay alive, chase the pitch out of the zone, but stayed in it. And that's, again... I'd be surprised on one of these to see Gable start moving. He's got a nice lead at first base. Two balls and two strikes for Seegers. Long hold by the pitcher. There goes Mitchell. The pitch. 
is fouled off. Cable stayed put then. A couple of false steps towards second and then remained around first base. And Northwestern finished off Maryland 11 to 1. 11 wow. runs on nine hits. Mm -hmm. Maryland one run on seven hits. That's a pretty shocking series there. Ground ball to short. This is double trouble. Flip to second for one. Over to first. Safe at first base. Seegers beats it out. Mitchell's out at second. One out for the Hawks now in the ninth. Here comes Cade Moss. Looks like we might have a new pitcher for Ohio State. Mound visit. Door opens up down the left field line. The Buckeyes will make a pitching change in the ninth. Iowa leads it 3-2. to two. We're back after this pitching change break. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Does your company attire make you feel like you're always fourth and long? It's time for a change. Hand the ball off to Authentic Brand and watch your team transform into MVPs. On game days, our team dresses like champions in Authentic Brand. Ensure that your company's reputation remains untarnished by using nothing but the label specifically designed to display your company's identity. Ask your supplier for Authentic Brand products and see for yourself why it's more than just a label. It's a statement. Feel the excitement as NASCAR returns to the Iowa Speedway with Powerball and the Iowa Lottery. Just add the double play bonus to your Powerball ticket for $1, then enter it in the VIP club, and you could win tickets to the sold-out NASCAR race or other exclusive race weekend prizes. Feel the power of NASCAR and double play today. Woohoo! See complete rules and details at ialottery.com slash VIP. New pitcher into the game for Ohio State is a right-hander. This is Jacob Morin. He'll come in out of the Ohio State bullpen. 2-0 in 13 appearances with a 251 ERA, 14 and a third innings, 10 hits, 4 runs, all earned, just 4 walks, 21 strikeouts. Opponents hitting just 189. And you see those numbers and you think, oh, 95, 98. Nope. 83 to 85 is going to be that fastball. Whoa. Super, super slider heavy, 75. He'll throw a changeup as well, um, which is really good. Uh, so Cade Moss is probably going to see, going to probably going to see some sliders here. I'm sure he's going to see. Um, you know, he'll he'll see the off speed occasionally. If you can get it up, then that's where you really want to try to do some some damage with it. Michael Seegers is the runner at first base for Iowa. Cade Moss will be the batter. Hawkeyes seeking insurance up three to two in the ninth. Iowa out hitting Ohio State eight to five. Yeah, scoreboard operators. I love how you transition to a whisper there, John. Very nicely done. <laughs> <laughs> don't need to yell that. <laughs> nope. Uh, all right, here's Cade Moss. Now we can go back to regular talking. <laughs> We really should be keeping a journal, John. <laughs> All right, here we go. First pitch to Moss. Hold on a minute. Throw it over to first to keep Seegers around the bag. He dives back in. Cade with a single his last time up. Two for ten on the year. And it worked back into the fold. More unreasonably quick to the plate. There is strike one. Wow, that is so slow coming in there. Yeah, 74 mile an hour snapped it right in the right into the zone outside part. Another pickoff move to first, a little bit better than the prior attempt. Michael's back in. Andy Nelson's on deck. Would like to see him have an opportunity to bat in this inning. No balls in a strike. Another throw over to first. You notice how Ohio State fans don't complain when their guys throw the first? I was just thinking that. 
Nobody's oh. telling him to hurry up, speed the game along. Nobody's worried about it then. Oh, one. Cade lifts it deep to left, but Lipsy will have plenty of room. He'll make the catch for out number two. Here comes Andy Nelson. He'll get a crack at this new Ohio State pitcher. No baseballs getting out to left. You wouldn't think so. But if this guy hangs one, you could see what Andy did yesterday where he rips one down the line. And Seegers probably gets home from first. Yeah, Michael is at 100% speed-wise. First pitch to Andy. Took it for a strike down the heart of the plate, 84 miles an hour. And you're telling me that's a fastball, huh? That's the fastball. Timing up, Andy. Hey, his ERA is pretty darn good, so he, he gets people out. Pickoff move to first once again. I don't care if he throws 74 if he gets people out. Mm -hmm. Large gap in right center for Andy. They are really playing him to pull, especially on the infield. And Andy far in front of the 75 mile an hour pitch there, and he's down in the count, nothing and two. Be seven, eight, nine coming to the plate for the Buckeyes in the bottom of the ninth. Iowa leading three to two right now. 0 2 to Andy. We'll wait a moment for it. Throw over to first base. Yeah, I'll see if we get any pinch hitters in that mess from somebody that they don't want to face the left handed Ben Detay. It's all lefties, isn't it? Mm hmm. 0 2 to Nelson. Here it is. Pitch out. Oh, back pick to first base. Seegers was reading that properly. He gets back. When your fastball's 83, it's not even the greatest pitch out either. Served its purpose. Just helps the catcher just a touch, I suppose. <laughs> One ball and two strikes. Another throw over to first. They're pretty accurate with those throws over there, aren't they? He's accurate, and he's got good quick feet. One, two, swing and a miss. Nelson chased in the dirt, just waved at it. That pitch wow. was very slow, and wow, Morin is giving it to our dugout. That was okay. interesting. Sure, pal. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth. Iowa leads it three to two back in just a moment. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. If you or someone you know is having thoughts of suicide, experiencing a mental health or substance use crisis, or just need someone to listen, 988 provides a direct connection to free, confidential, and compassionate support. When you call, text, or chat 988, you'll be quickly connected to trained crisis counselors who will listen to your concerns, provide support, and connect you to additional resources if needed. There is hope. You are not alone. For 24-7 support, call or text 988 or chat 988lifeline.org. At MidAmerican Energy, our 1.6 million customers depend on our energy 24-7. That's why we work 24-7 to deliver the safe, reliable energy you need. To keep our 99.9% .9 reliability record, we're enhancing our technology, improving resiliency, and investing in critical infrastructure. We're generating power from all available resources to cover any increases in demand. And we're innovating to ensure you always have the energy you need. MidAmerican Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. We've reached the bottom of the ninth inning in Columbus. Iowa leading 3-2, to two, trying to even the series with the Buckeyes and force a rubber match tomorrow. First pitch will be at 11 o'clock Central Time. Our pregame coverage will begin at 10.30 on the Hawkeye Radio Network. Iowa holding on right now, 3-2. to two. Ben Detay continues to pitch for the black and gold. He'll face 7, 8, and 9. Kadena, Miller, and Stevenson, that's who's due up. Three lefties in a row. We'll see if they make any changes to that. Detay's first pitch is across for a strike. Nice hard fastball from Ben. Kadena homered his last time up. He hit one two and a half miles the last time he batted. Stocky left-handed hitter inside. Detay floated it. It's one and one. Out of the windup, Detay delivers the 1-1. One -one. Low, ball two. A 
Ohio State has played in one one-run game this year. Wow. 2-1. Low ball three. All the Hawkeyes on the top rail down the first baseline in their dugout. Looking for a strike from Detay. The 3-1. Catches the outside corner. Three and two. Ish. Expanded zone just a touch, maybe. We'll we've, take been, it. we've been expanded to that side for most of the game, so not terribly surprising. Full count from Ben. He lost him. Walked him. Ball four. And that will bring up a pinch hitter. And a pinch runner. That hurts a leadoff walk with a one-run lead. Mm -mm -mm. Well, with the speed this team possesses particularly. All right, so the pinch runner is C.J. Richard, a freshman from Cincinnati. And the pinch hitter is Nick Jamarusti. You saw him yesterday. He hit a home run. Also was hit by a pitch and singled. Jamarusti, a junior from Chicago. I still wouldn't be surprised to see Jamarusti lay down a bunt. Tello is thinking along the same lines as he's he does, even with the bag at third. He does not have a sacrifice hit on the year, though. Detay from the stretch. Here's a bunt right back to Ben. Ben picks it up, throws to first. It's high. It pulled Cop off the bag. And there are runners at first and second now with nobody out. High throw to first. And we'll have another pinch hitter. This is Hunter Rawson. Three to two Iowa in the bottom of the ninth. Coach Heller is out of the dugout. I'm in trouble see. seeing who's down in the bullpen for the Hawkeyes. Yeah, it's in your lane. Actually, like, I don't think anybody's warm, yeah, though. Yeah, I don't know if anybody is warm. Brant Hogue is down there throwing. This might just be a chat from Coach Heller. Rarely do we see him go out there without making a change. But I think I, this is probably one of those delayed to get loose situations, but I, I think this might be just a, a chat. Well, because your right-hander throwing doesn't even have his jersey top off. Well, your left-hander's walking to the gate. Now he's walking back. I don't know. We'll see. And uh, no change. Just a talk from Coach Heller. That might be the first time in my three years that I've seen Coach Heller walk to the mound and not take the pitcher with him. It's my first time in three years. Coach Heller back to the dugout. No change. Runners at first and second base. For Hunter Rawson, pinch hitter, right-handed hitter. Iowa up one, but two on and nobody out for the Buckeyes in the bottom of the ninth. Corners in for Iowa. Try a pickoff move to second base. Runner gets back. rely on the changeup to force a ground ball, you'd have to imagine. Ben better get pitching here. Detay comes set. Here's the bunt attempt. Push down the first baseline. Kopp will pick it up and apply the tag. Runners advance to second and third with one out. We'll go to the top of the order for Lipsy. <laughs> Tying run at third, winning run at second. You get back to executing at the bottom of the zone here if you're Ben. Infield comes in for the Hawkeyes. Lipsy's in the box. Detay ready. First pitch outside, ball one. Did 
Should we talk about Hawaii again? <laughs> I think that was just a, just a Marcus thing, or will that work here? Middle infield moves back now for the Hawkeyes. The 1-0 is in the dirt, 2-0. Yeah, I mean, I and I understand the reason you're going to move the middle back is you, know, you lose the game if he singles through through your infield. If your middle infielders catch the ball, you don't lose the game. You just tie it. 2-0 from Detay. Line drive caught by Gable Mitchell. And he sprints forward. Just as you were talking about it, John, that's probably a base hit if Gable's played in like he just was. 105 off the bat on a center center fastball. And Gable Mitchell is positioned perfectly. And we get one more lefty lefty matchup. Lipsy. Lipsy did everything he needed to do. Two down. Here's Kazmar. Runners still at second and third for Ohio State. Iowa leading three to two. I still think if I'm Kazmar, I'd drag Bunnett. Cop is way back. Tie the game. Detay, first pitch, low, ball one. I mean, I know you're not the hero then that wins the game, but you tie the game and... Hopefully that doesn't come to their mind, John. <laughs> one ball, no strikes with two outs. Detay is ready, the pitch. Low again. Cade can't locate it. It's right below him. He finds it before the runner can come down from third. Two and oh. Mm -mm -mm. Now you got to be really careful. You don't want to give anything too good. You have first base open. Yeah, I mean, you want the lefty-lefty matchup, but... You're right. You can't all of a sudden get out over the plate here. Moss will walk out and talk with Ben on the mound. And Ben just can't press here. You know, the uh, saying here, you can only do what you can do, and as obvious as that is, but you know, we don't need Ben to throw a 92 mile an hour fastball. You don't need him to throw a change up that moves any more than what his normal one does. Two balls, no strikes, two outs. Two in scoring position for Ohio State. Iowa up three to two. The pitch from Detay popped up on the infield. Tello is underneath it at third base. Raider made the play. He caught it, and the Hawkeyes win it three to two. Oh, boy. <laughs> Runner kind of clipped Raider as he ran around the bag, too. So, boy, that was a nice job of Raider to stay with it. And, wow, what a much-needed win. Gutsy effort, second and third, less than two outs, and Iowa gets out of the pickle and gets the win. Need to find out what Coach Heller said to his team on the mound during that mound visit in the ninth. Ho ho! My guess is uh, it was a little bit like some of the some of the morning speeches we've heard of <laughs> who's got the grit and who's got the toughness and show them you've got it. The Ohio State guy walked off the mound chirping at your dugout. Make sure you give it back and show some show some style, and they did it. Iowa with a great win this Saturday afternoon, 3-2 to two over the Buckeyes, forcing the rubber match tomorrow. We're back with post-game coverage right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Nestled on the rolling greens of the iconic Finkbine Golf Course, Bump's Restaurant is open to the public year-round. Whether you're swinging by after a round of golf or just in the neighborhood, Bump's is your go-to spot for scrumptious sandwiches, shareable appetizers, and mouth-watering pizzas. Quench your thirst with our selection of local craft beers. Or let our full bar serve you a refreshing cocktail to toast to your game. Or just because it's 5 o'clock somewhere. Our happy hour from 2 to 6 p.m. is the perfect 19th hole. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to catch our latest daily specials. And here's a little insider secret just for our radio listeners. Thursdays are not to be missed at Bump's Restaurant. It's BOGO Happy Hour. Buy one, get one free on select beverages from our happy hour menu. Whether you're a diehard golfer or just love a great meal with a view, Bump's Restaurant at Finkbine Golf Course is your destination. We're currently open Wednesday through Saturday. Swing on by today. Bump's at Finkbine Golf Course. Great food, great drinks, and the best views in town. See you at Bump's. Iowa takes down Ohio State 3-2 to two in an absolute thriller. Check your heart rate, Hawkeye fans. Marcus Morgan gets the win. The save goes to Ben Detay, who, when we needed him the most, really focused and locked in to get those 
uh, final uh, outs there in the ninth. The loss will go to Gavin Bruni. Iowa led <laughs> wire to wire, but uh, tight the whole time. In a 3-2 to two game, it has nothing but tight written all over it. Yeah, it didn't necessarily feel like a... Uh an in control game the whole way but great start from marcus morgan again wasn't wasn't even in the absolute weekend pictures but marcus goes six innings three hits a run it was earned three walks six strikeouts anthony watts was good enough an inning and a third two hits gave up the home run uh, but struck out two detay comes in in the ninth goes an inning and two thirds walked a batter and boy was it uh a little sketchy but boy, needed needed the two outs, and and you know, we talked yesterday how every Hawkeye defender seemed to be a half a beat away from the positioning, and there in the ninth inning, pushed the infield back, line drive right at Gable Mitchell, which saves the game there, and then they get the pop up to end the game. So very well done. Iowa forcing a, a rubber match tomorrow with Ohio State. First pitch at 11 o'clock Central Time. We'll begin our coverage at 10:30 on the Hawkeye. Radio Network, who stood out to you offensively today, John? Cable Mitchell again, three for four. You know, and just as I was working him over about swinging at the first pitch, then he served the line drive on the, the 0 1 pitch into left field, and he had three hits. He had one, two, three, four, five other hitters have hits. Um, so kind of spread around, but, you know, Ohio State pitching was, was equal to the Iowa task. Just three walks, uh, hit a batter, but uh, there weren't a ton of, of bonus base runners running around there, but. Um, you know, Iowa ran themselves in trouble or out of causing any trouble there early, but then settled in, did a nice job on the bases, um, and just kind of kept trying to create havoc and run through pitchers. Coach Heller talked about it in pregame. If if they could use Marcus, Watts, and Detay, they felt like they'd be in really good shape, and that's all they used, and those three got it done for the Hawkeyes today. Yeah, they absolutely got it done, and, and again, to me, that you look at, at the Iowa threw 62% strikes today, which uh, way up from what it's been, you know, 154 pitches, so really nice job. Iowa goes for the series win tomorrow. We'll be back and talk with associate head coach Marty Sutherland right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Hi, I'm Gary Dolphin, and if you want your home to be exceptionally comfortable during these cold Iowa winters and hot, humid summers, you need to turn to Dave Lennox and your local Lennox Home Comfort Specialist. Lennox has been serving Iowa consumers since 1895, when Dave Lennox built his first furnace in Marshalltown, and Lennox is still building its high-efficiency furnaces and air conditioners there today. For the best home comfort system you can buy, it's Lennox and your local Lennox dealer. Lennox and the Hawkeyes. Now there's a winning combination. If you guessed that was the sound of a bag of Pioneer brand A-Series soybeans, you guessed right. Well, kinda. It was really the sound of an innovative team that spent decades perfecting a seed with exclusive genetics and the ultimate agronomic advantage. The sort of breeders who don't rest until they've achieved outstanding performance. Pioneer brand A-Series soybeans. Number one for a reason. Visit pioneer.com slash genetics. Iowa takes down Ohio State this afternoon, 3-2 to two in Columbus to even the series. We're joined by associate head coach Marty Sutherland. Coach, congratulations on a great win this afternoon. Absolutely gritty effort out of the guys and, and obviously didn't make it easy there in the ninth, but figured out a way to get it done. And, and um, you know, they stayed calm and they played hard. And, you know, even yesterday, I don't think I even mentioned that, but I thought we played hard, you know, just just didn't make plays, you know, that, that help you win. And today we did enough of them to, to come out on top. How about that start from Marcus Morgan? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it starts there, right? I mean, it starts on the mound, and, and Marcus was tremendous and kind of got bumped up a little bit uh, today with Brody giving, giving Brody an extra day for tomorrow. But, you know, that's his best start since the first one of the year, you know, and, and he controlled the zone. He was in control of himself. Um, you know, we, we basically only give up the two solo home runs, and, and um, you know, when Mark got a little traffic or would walk a guy or lead off single, he just bared down and, and was tremendous. So um, just great job for, from him and, and feel good for him and, and hopefully. Hopefully that that's a 
you know, a sign of things to come for him. How often is, have you seen Coach Heller go out to the mound and not make a pitching change like he did in the ninth there? Yeah, well, I mean, some of that it's just like, you know, you're setting your defense and we, you know, we do that part. You know, Sean doesn't do that part. So um, just wanted to talk them through the situation. Obviously, you're in a bunt, sp- you're in a bunt spot. Um, we want to make sure we get an out, you know, all those types of things and all the scenarios that could happen. You just want to be be ready. And, and then the other thing is, is you just want to give Ben a break, right? It didn't start off well. We walk the guy. Um, they bring in a really good runner, get the bunt down. He doesn't make a good throw to first. And so some of that's calm. You know, let's let's just, you know, back everything down a little bit. But then we obviously want to be ready for whatever they do. And and then Ben gets out of it. You know, we get the line out. Um, we deserve one of those because we lined out about <laughs> seven times today offensively. Um, and then a great job uh, coming back on Kazmar. So um, just needed one of these types of wins, right? A, a win that uh, we really had to fight for, that, that it was kind of um, difficult offensively. We were able to execute a few things, but we weren't great uh, in general. But we found a way to, to get it done. And that, uh, that feel good, feels good for that dugout happy for those guys yeah you could see the passion and the energy coming off the field today how about gable mitchell offensively what a threat he's been well you think about just the bottom of the lineup and what they did i mean they got us going multiple times and gable certainly was the the catalyst down there a lot with three hits but then michael had a big hit was able to execute you know a couple times Cade got in there gets a bunt down gets a hit um you really look at it those guys did a tremendous job in getting us going that's where all three runs came from you know from that group um you know offensively it's just been a weird kind of weekend we just haven't been great um but you know we've got, the one thing we have done is executed as far as you know when runners got the third we've scored them what the difference is is we're just kind of it's a sack fly or it's it's a fielder's choice we're just mi- missing that one gapper you know that one big hit that that scores two or three to get us really going so hopefully we get a little bit of that tomorrow and and um, but overall you're just happy you know given given how it's gone um to win a game like that and and uh just come through when that when uh, all the money's on the table let's get on that bus coach congratulations on the win. Let's Thanks. win the series tomorrow. Associate Head Coach Marty Sutherland on our post-game show from Bill Davis Stadium today. All right, 3-2, to two, Iowa wins a thriller over Ohio State. Let's relive some of the highlights. <laughs> and the Hawks are going to get one. Maybe. Fly ball to right. The catch is made. Seegers will come down the line from third. He'll score. It's 2 to nothing. Two balls, no strikes. The pitch to Nelson, grounded to third. Diving stop by the third baseman. He'll throw to second and out. Called out at second base. Moss went sliding in. The run scores down the line. It's three to one. Boy, that's a really close play at second base. Cade's moving outside. The one-two, lined into left. Wilmus is there. Ben caught it. He let it get deep right below his belt, and he caught it for out number two. Hit well to center. Huxdorf going back right in front of the track. Kyles got it for the third out. 2-0 from Dete. Line drive caught by Gable Mitchell. And he sprints forward. Just as you were talking about it, John, that's probably a base hit if Gable's played in like he just was. Two balls, no strikes, two outs. Two in scoring position for Ohio State. Iowa up 3-2. The pitch from Dete. Popped up on the infield. Tello is underneath it at third base. Raider made the play. He caught it, and the Hawkeyes win it 3-2. to two. A thrilling victory for the Hawkeyes today to take care of business and beat Ohio State 3-2 to two to even the series. We'll go for the series win tomorrow. First pitch at 11 Central Time. Our pregame coverage will start at 10.30 on the Hawkeye Radio Network. That'll do it for our coverage of Iowa Hawkeye Baseball this afternoon from Bill Davis Stadium in Columbus. For my great board op down the line, Michael, excellent job as always to pull us through that one. My color analyst, John Evans. I'm John Leo saying so long today from Columbus. Iowa 3, Ohio State 2. The Hawkeyes will go for the series win tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Every day is a great day to be a Hawkeye, and some are just a little bit better than others. Take care, everybody. Hawkeye Baseball has been brought to you by High V. Score big savings with a new High V Perks membership. University of Iowa Healthcare. Changing medicine, changing lives. Oak Knoll Retirement Community. Homewood Suites and Home 2. 
Hawk fans, experience your home away from home at Coralville's finest all-sweet hotels. Iowa Corn. You might think Iowa just grows corn, but the truth is, corn grows Iowa. Brought to you by Iowa's corn farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and the Iowa Corn Promotion Board. Also brought to you by Mediacom, home of extreme and one gig internet speeds. Wimmer's Meats, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. Travel Leaders, Destinations Unlimited, the official travel partner of the Hawkeyes. And by Bud and Mary's. There's no THC cap on Iowa medical cannabis, and getting a card is fast and easy online. Get your medical card today. Visit BudMary.com. The preceding has been a Learfield presentation on the Hawkeye Sports Network.